So, Group A so far, this is what's happened, and you will see that Uganda have scored a win, and so did Ghana, but earlier they came a cropper, and now it will be up to the uh, Mozambique team to get a win behind their belt. Can they cause an upset against Uganda? Well, Botswana had a middle-order recovery between uh, Inzamam and Pamelo, 40 and 32 respectively, and uh, they recovered their innings to score a reasonable score of 146 for 9. They were able to defend that because Druv picked up the first five-wicket haul in this tournament, 5 for 18 in his four, a uh, leg spin bowler, and uh, a lot of promise, as Daryl Cullinan was saying earlier during commentary. So Botswana won by 11 runs. So both teams have played a game each, and you'll see there that both of them have now scored a win each. So Uganda will be looking to stay ahead because they've got a positive run rate, and uh, can Mozambique, as I said earlier, cause an upset. Darrell Cullinan's alongside me, and he did the uh, pitch report earlier this morning. Let's hear from Darrell. Good afternoon, Darrell. Good afternoon, Aslam. Good afternoon to our viewers. It's dried up ever so much. It's had a fair bit of sun today. Those cracks, but they should not be an issue. The groundsman assured us again this morning that it's, uh, the grass that he's left there is keeping it together. We had a bit of bounce. There was at times some turn. But saying all of that, it still looks pretty good for batting. And it's the last time this particular pitch will be used for this particular uh, segment of the tournament. They'll be using the one alongside from tomorrow. So, Uganda with the wind under their belt, take on Mozambique. They will be aiming to cause an upset. Hussein Munich was with the two captains earlier for the toss. Good afternoon and welcome to the toss. Today it's game number eight, Mozambique against Uganda. And with me, I've got the two skippers, Philippe Antonio from Mozambique and Brian Masaba from Uganda. Brian, you've got the, uh, the coin? All right. Head. Head in the coin. And it's a tie. All right, Uganda won a toss. Yeah, we'll have a butt. We will have a butt. All right. Brian, um, you decided to bet. Uh, what's the reason? What have, you, what have you made of the pitch so far? Uh, just watching uh, a couple of the last games, it looks like the pitch has settled down a bit now and should be good for batting. So hopefully we can come out here and put on a good score. Get some runs on the board. What are you looking at as a total? Um, anything in the 150 range and above would be good for us. We'd be happy with that. All right. Tell me, what have you guys been up to? You had a two-day break between uh, since the last game, which you won. What have you guys been up to as far as preparation is concerned? Oh yeah, the boys took a bit of a break. Uh, we were hosted by the Ugandan community here, which was very nice. And then uh, yesterday it was back to business, had a bit of a heat out in the middle, so you know, guys could get the blood moving again. Fantastic. And then any changes from your um, last game? Yeah, we've got uh, three changes. Uh, Frank, um, Fred, the wicketkeeper, and uh, Cosmas, opening bowler, take a break. And uh, we'll get some of the youngsters in. Uh, Munir Ismail comes in, uh, Henry Senyondo, and uh, Joseph Baguma. All right, excellent. All the best. Good luck for today. Thank you. Philip, what would you have done? Uh, betting first. Yes, the plan was betting first because now I can see that now the wicket is a betting track. So that was the plan to betting first. Okay, so what, what do you want to restrict them to? They're talking about 150. What do you think? Yeah, it's a good score, but we'll try ourselves just to minimize them till 120, 126. Excellent. Any changes from your side? Yes. One, one. I brought in, I took it out uh, Gomez and then I brought, I brought in uh, uh, Bernardo Simango. All right, good luck. All the best for today. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay, out in the middle, the news is you can have won the toss and decided to bet. Well, I've got Del, Del alongside me. Does it surprise you that uh, over the last four matches, the teams winning the toss have looked to bet first? Team lineup? No, not at all. Uh, I feel they want to put the runs on the board and put those to follow under pressure. And Brian Masaba, he captained well in Uganda's first win. Uh, they're one of the fancied sides. They offer depth all round with both bat and ball.
this uh, another touch that this tournament has introduced, which is really just so good to see, is that um, as the tournament has gone on, we've seen the pitch improve. Tomorrow, suddenly, as the the business end, as we reach the business end, the last four days of the tournament, they use a new surface. All the tactics, all of the approaches that they've now mustered up till today, suddenly changes. A lot will depend on what that surface is by tomorrow. It still has a fair amount of grass, but uh, the groundsman said this morning that by before the toss tomorrow morning, he would have given it a further mow. But yes, uh, it'll take that little bit of right. What are we on now? Is it different to what we had uh, on the previous strip? But I don't anticipate it, there being much difference between the two wickets. But if anything, you will have a bit of life in the second strip which will be used as from tomorrow as we did see on the first day uh, on the strip that is now about to see its last day of cricket interesting point you make there what we saw here was uh, of course a team photograph all good for the memory banks and good memorabilia piece and of course there was uh, just the one change which they made and uh, that youngster is on debut in preparation for the particular this tournament and here's confirmation of uh, the Ugandan debutant picking up his uh, country's colours. Congratulations to him and good luck. Yeah, wonderful, proud moment for him. This is what uh, he obviously got into this game for to represent his country and now he's got the opportunity. I was just saying that in preparation for the tournament, the groundsmen normally water and then put it under the covers to make sure that they keep the moisture. This particular pitch that we're talking about for tomorrow and the rest of the tournament has not necessarily been under cover. So that's why I think it's going to be a different kettle of fish come tomorrow. Brendan Frost, he's the groundsman on the left. I hope it's not so. Aslam, because I mean the point you made was as you started out, they've gained confidence now and we've definitely seen particularly the batters, as this tournament has progressed, become more confident in, in <laughs> displaying their skills and hitting through the line of the ball. It was a nervous start come day one, and it's always the case. It's a new tournament, whoever you are, whoever you play for. Now, we've seen some very good matches. As the tournament, tournament has progressed, we've seen higher scores, and we've also seen closer finishes. Earlier today, Botswana managed to win by 11 runs against uh, a team that I thought would start fa did start favourite this morning, Ghana. And of course, the previous afternoon we saw a superb match there as well. Simon Sazi is uh, one of two openers for Uganda. And the man joining him, the captain Brian Masaba, one of the better looking players. Uganda will have ideas about what is a good score, yeah? Boys arrived early and they'll be aware of what happened in the match this morning. But we have seen the afternoon games produce better scores and easier stroke play. I've always felt bowling first in this format. It gives you a second chance. If you get it wrong with the ball, you can try to put things right with the bat. But if you get it wrong with the bat, first up, then it's very tough for your bowlers to try and defend a small score. Francisco Kuana. He's been given the new ball for Mozambique. I've described Mozambique as a busy team. No real superstars, but they, they're really good with the regard to an all-round effort. They're very noisy in the field, they're quick. There is uh, not one of their players who's a handicap in the field. Well, let's just remind our viewers that uh, that match against Ghana, had they not dropped, uh, what's his name, uh, um, his name is Rexford, they probably would have been within uh, a hunt. Eventually, they lost by a large margin. So let's see how they put things together today. First ball of their second match. Both teams and just gently ease past the retiring bowler to open their account. And they'll have that in the memory bank. Uh, we beat them essentially by a one-man performance. 
all to play for. And, and don't be surprised if they surprise the likes of Uganda here. The quick bowlers uh, bustle in. They're going to be hitting those areas. By and large, they've shown to have good disciplines. Uh, if anything, even if they can up their performances, have a good finish here, I think it's part of their their building process as they get into the swing of things at this level. So those type of results are so important. The man at backward point uh, in the previous match, he probably produced from a fielding perspective. He recovered, he did some work behind point there on his knees. It was a direct hit. Very impressive, and he wasn't exactly, he was on the ring almost. Moving to his left, staying on his knees, having to aim left of the stumps. It was a bullet of a throw. And he also took a very good catch. And then he bowled decently, and then he scored 28 not out as well. So a good package cricketer they have. He does stand in that important position at uh, backward point. The run out was good. He even took a catch. And uh, his full name. I was just thinking he shouldn't Shao remain nameless. Ho. Sorry, Aslam. <laughs> Shao Ho. Everyone else appealed apart from the bowler. He pick up an extra. Good straight run up. Bustling run up. Good approach. High arm action. Keeps it pretty straight. As Lawrence was saying earlier, the, uh, to unearth bowlers has not been so much of a problem. But the problem in Africa is, and we've picked it up as well, is developing batsmen and maybe uncovering just national talent. They're all having to actually learn the skills of batsmanship, but that's never easy. Thick bottom edge for that single to third man. And the key again, Daryl, is it needs to happen from a young age, from school's level. And once they get into the habit, things work out. End of the over, five without loss. Bowling is a closed skill. It's a mechanical skill which, if repeated, can result in this type of bowling, smooth run-up, well over the top. That's textbook stuff. I'm not a bowling coach, but he may be able to just, uh, a proper bowling coach may see those little things. But batting is an open skill. And yes, spot on, you need to catch them at 13, 14, I would say as young as 10. 10 to 12 from my, well it's been over 20 years of coaching, is when you've got to nail down the basics, you don't get another chance. And with the emergence of T20 cricket, we're having to teach those skills a lot younger, which wasn't the case 10 years ago. Always thought, well, you'll make a white ball cricketer out of a red ball cricketer. Now today, you're trying to make a red ball cricketer out of a white ball cricketer. And that's the demand, and that's the sort of cricket that kids want to play and be coached. Oh, Apesh, Apesh, the fuller length. Calling for the fuller length, and that's Zhao Hao, the man who we just spoke about in the previous over, how good his fielding has been. Uh, and he looks absolutely a forlorn figure. Look at him. <laughs> he knows they depend on him in that position, but what a poor stroke from the batsman, hanging it out there. He had, an, he had the opportunity to take the bat away. Not a good follow-up delivery, especially after you've in, induced the edge. Hard luck, mate. Up 
Which again. Because if it's not there, just going back to that batting, you, you deal with the cricketer who's now 15, 16, 17, you have to then try and uncoach a lot of the bad habits, which means breaking down his game, and that can be very demoralizing. So you have a certain time period which you have to take advantage of. To get to this level, there's certain basics that need to be in place. It's too late. Just a touch. That's center. I like the word you used there, uncoaching the bad habits. It's a wonderful description. guilty of dropping the catch which he didn't quite seem to pick up but this is what we spoke about in Mozambique's first match we haven't seen a better piece of ground fielding the ball is played just backward of point he's moved sharply to his left now he stays on his knees off his knees he's having to aim left because he's now throwing across throwing across himself But the other good thing is, just watch the release. I mean, that is elbow, that is wrist, that followed through, the flick of the wrist. Brilliant piece of fielding. Any international cricketer would be proud of that. Well done, Daryl. The other thing to mention is, from a wicket keeper's point of view, your judgment has to be equally good because you're running in, you probably want to grab the ball because in earnest to make sure that you don't let it go. And then to decide to leave it is also a good bit of cricket. So fantastic judgment all around. That really lifted us here in the commentary box of our feet. And we were treated to some better stuff, some good stuff throughout that match as well. That's why I described him as a package cricketer. Run out, good catch, well bowled, and then in a lost cause, a very polished 28 as well. Good cricketer. He's the type of a guy that needs to come to more of the senior countries like South Africa, Zimbabwe, or maybe even Namibia to hone those skills further. That's the scorecard. Two of us complete, 10 without loss. It's a quiet start, but importantly, not losing wickets. I'm sure Lawrence Mertlani would have given them a good talking to. Win here. And uh, they can count themselves as favourite out of this group to at least finish in the top two. <laughs> Batsman's actually made that look a difficult delivery to con. To, to play it. He needed to be committed either on the back foot completely or on the front foot. He's halfway through. So let's just say that the bowler has actually beaten him on length, Daryl, and he's nowhere. He's made it look good. Never known a great player to be caught on the crease too often. They are the back, they're forward. But he is the type of bowler, Kuana, where he is skiddy. And what you may anticipate being a shortish length, maybe, but fuller. You almost have to say, right, I'm going to look. If I'm in doubt, get forward against him. Tuesday, plenty on offer on this big outfield. I think that's a fair point you're making about the bowler because, uh, uh, or about batsmen in particular, because they don't often face bowlers with this type of pace. So we may be asking too much of them. And I would imagine on good quality pitches that offer you consistency in bounce. Good piece of fielding. It's a hallmark of the Mozambican side. They, we've seen a drop catch, but. They've been very, very active in the field. Very happy to commit themselves fully, put their bodies on the line. And he's palmed it away, and well, that was a definitely a full save. And it beaten him. Absolutely. Now you're right. I was about to say, he saved three runs there. Oh, oh 
no ball and it's ended up being a boundary and with it comes the free hit come on francesco kuana we've enjoyed watching you and yeah he's definitely overstepped dropping his uh, front knee also maybe just falling over slightly to his left on his follow-through so a free hit for simon four runs plus a free hit it was never this easy for us daryl <laughs> That's, that's the way to go after the, the, the free hit. He obviously tried to maximize, so add two more to that four that he scored, and that takes his total to 20 without loss. I just need to say that, of course, between Daryl and I, it was at two different levels completely, where it wasn't this easy to score runs. Free hits on no balls. He's played as his wide delivery. I thought for a moment he stood and looked because it may have gone off the ground, but they were pretty sure that this went to hand and Koana does have the wicket. Perfectly legit. In the end he's held it and that's why the, the batsman probably stood. Was so disappointed being a wide delivery and, and to find himself getting out. Sisazi is out for seven and gone Uganda. He's lose the first wicket. Sorry, sir. Excuse me. Last ball, right? Over. Okay. Could he have left it? It would have been called wide, but deciding to go after it. That does tend to happen in the first six over, doesn't it? Or even in the first ten overs, if it's a 50 over match, because you want to get to, you want to get back to the wall. I'm sure his eyes all lit up because it was in the air for a long time, and uh, unfortunate for him, it's taken the top edge. Didn't help him not getting his front foot more towards the ball. Muhumuza. One of the more fancy players when Uganda here yeah, will uh, look to him to spend time at the crease. End of the over, so he's at the non strikers end. I've been impressed with some of the. Uh, singles that they've taken yeah, like some the, of them most like of them the two fielders but because they know they're stationed at the edge of the boundary I almost follow your stroke with the run and run through and that's good unless you really played very powerfully to the fielder you've got to be watchful I think that's the one thing that has been world class so far in this tournament yes we've had the odd hiccup which you're going to have his T20 cricket has been the running between the wickets. Catch it! Oh, it was just helped on its way. First slip would have seen that little attempted run down to third man. Wouldn't, should not have taken him by surprise. Well, you got to feel for Simango. This is the second. Catch dropped off his bowling. Oh, a big to drop catches against the team, which is the more fancied one. Let's come at a gentle pace. As a slipper, this is about uh, we would want every catch to be. But just notice the way that he's falling. problem is when you're falling you're off balance your whole body and your hands are working 
across the ball. There's a time with the position in your head moving to your right. You see there he's falling across it. You need to be at the point where your hands are behind the ball. <laughs> he's disappointed. He also knows that this is being beamed along the wall. And to, to add to his embarrassment, four overs, 22 for one. Maybe you can talk us through this, uh, Daryl, because it's a, it's a specialist art at uh, slip. There's just confirmation of the card with uh, you can electing to bet first. They've lost Simon Sezazi for seven. And uh, Muhum has just joined Masaba, who's been given the life. So it is an art, slip fielding. And uh, alongside a couple of vessels, Brian McMillan and yourself, I think that started the trend for some quality slip fielding that South Africa produced throughout, well, over the last 20 or 30 years. What are the key aspects to good slip fielding? Again, very well taken single. Good understanding between the two batters. It is an art. Aslam, I spent most of my career there. You mentioned someone like Brian McMillan. He was an exception. His nickname was Buckets. And he'd stand with his hands on his knees and it was like catching flies for him. But I had small hands and then my turning point came was when I worked with Ray Jennings. We actually spent a season together, yeah, but it was before then. And long story short, he said, as a, as a slipper, you need to train like a keeper. And the intensity level, and you had to take a lot of catches, one-handed catches, learn how to fall, learn how to get behind the ball. And he just broke it up into, right, you've got four corners. Imagine those are the goals. So he taught me how to move, how to move and get your head behind the ball and catch the line of the ball. It's the point I made about that catch being dropped there. The slipper was moving across himself or moving to his left. So he's moving, the ball coming at him, he's moving across that line. Then it hits and it's out or it sticks. And then started to get more confident coming to national cricket. And you had someone like Alan Donald who was quick and I, I didn't feel confident. Because it would come at a pace. But ultimately with that thinking, that training, knowing how to stand. Why should a first slip stand different to a keeper? You don't see a keeper standing with his gloves on his knees. He's in a set position. Now... First slip, a you're a meter away from him. So by and large, the catches he's going to take, at, at first slip, I'm taking the same. Now he wears gloves because you know he catches a, a lot of balls, but let's just keep it to actually catching the ball. So I've got to catch what he's got to catch, and I don't have gloves. So it's so more important for me to be more confident be able to catch. But thanks to Ray Jennings, he turned it around for me. Otherwise, it was a 50-50 and invariably... <laughs> ah, well struck. That's an authentic, excellent cut. But I still see international slippers today, hands on knees, suddenly getting ready for the ball, the head drops. Well, that's an interesting move. He's well deep in his crease. I wonder if the bowler is aware of this or pointers brought it to his attention. Well, I hope he has because he's trying to take advantage of anything that's just short. He's going to play it off the back foot. Still deep in his crease. Ah, good response from the bowler. So that's it all in a nutshell, uh, Slum. But I, I still worry today when I see all the cricket they play and uh, the slip field is not balanced. A lot of them, their feet are too wide. You almost could be like a goalkeeper. You don't see a goalkeeper defending a goal kick, penalty kick with feet wide he's, he's you've got it at point of delivery you've got to be in that position ready so you can move left or right transfer your weight and balance but it is an art and it is a specialist skill they're coming back for the second so five overs complete 31 for one it's time for a commentary change hussein with six
Thank you, Aslam and Daryl. 31 for one. One more over remaining for the power play. They were 33 for one. Orale! A Uganda at uh, the power play. So it's been an improvement provided they can get two or more. Three or more, then they pass the 33. Just lost the one wicket so far. Asli firmly cut straight to the fielder. How are you doing, six? Fantastic. Thank you very much. How was, how was lunch? Uh, look, it's been the same. A lot better today with the ice cream, whipped cream. Oh, I missed that. Where was that? <laughs> but nonetheless, the catering has been amazing in Benoni. Another wonderful day of T20 cricket. Africa's finest. On display. Jaho, a man at backward point. I'll run out uh, Aslam and Daryl were talking about in the first Mozambique game. Okay, this is straight up. Straight to the man at yes! Madon and that, that's out. And they've been very vocal. Planning about that one wicket, that opening wicket, breaking the opening partnership and picking up a second. Getting themselves within this match early on in the power play. Looking for that big shot. About four balls remaining of the power play and he's caught right on the edge of the circle. Looks above. Great work. So the skipper, Brian Masaba, has gone for nine, 31 for two. Yeah, perhaps he's just targeting these last few deliveries, thinking if he just chips it over the circle, you could get a couple of runs or better yet, a boundary. Didn't need to move. It's so interesting to have a look at those uh, super slows. As the ball comes into the hand, invariably you will see the eye sometimes is closed for a split second. Riyazat Shah. But 36 of 29, not out in the first match. Riyazat Shah, highly rated. He's one of the better players around. Looking forward to watching him bat. Talking about a 150 plus total here. Soft hands. Get some soft going. With a single. And just the delivery remaining in the power play. Just the start that they would have wanted, Mozambique. I say the start. Anything under six and over in T20 cricket is still regarded as good. And that's exactly what they've done in his power play. Looking for a quick single to end the power play. And it's 32 for two after six. The dots, 21. Got a lot of running between the wickets. Just the 11 singles. We almost assume that would be the feature going forward now for Uganda, negotiating the next five overs. Teams, these past two days, have gotten to the halfway mark around that 47, 50 runs mark. Having lost three or four over, wickets, rather. Is he happy? Is he happy with the start, Lawrence Martliner? Joe Akua. Yeah, I did drop um, a catch at back at point. 
today was in a difficult one. He's a very useful all-rounder. Picked up very quickly. Got himself into position. Picked up the length and mid-wicket for four. Yeah, that's too short. But uh, at that type of pace, you've got to get it a touch fuller. Want to draw the batters forward. But uh, this length is asking to be hit, I'm afraid. And Riyazit Shah obliges. In fact, he had to wait for the ball. And then just waited and uh, rolled the wrist. Controlled it beautifully. Pass the bowler, half stop. Looks for two, one for the arm, and uh, oh wow, direct throw. Those always, always have to land upstairs. Tell you what, there's wonderful intensity all round in the field. Mozambique are active, they're loud, the energy levels, they're talking, they're encouraging, and there was slight hesitation by the batters as they turned for the second. Clean pickup. Let's have a look. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is tight. Yes, he's out. I'm afraid that's out. There was just a slight hesitation. And that's cost him his wicket. Go oh, on, listen to them. Listen to them. It requires everyone's efforts, not just the bowler, not just the wicket keeper everyone to be lively and that's exactly what they've done there to pick themselves up a third wicket fantastic the argument was is the second one on are you testing the arm bowler says the fielder rather says i'm up for it i've got an arm i've got an eye and i've got you Dissident Mohomouza, 8 of 9, 37 for 3. It's got to come for something, all that vocal stuff, the noise, the encouragement. It has to come for something at some point. And something I picked up during the warm up drills as the two sides were preparing for the match, Mahatlana busy with his side and all sorts of cones and warm-up drills and all colorful on the field and they were looking lively uganda look at mozambique they were quiet on the other side less cones on the field less lively as they were preparing their warm-up drills what matters is the match situation and they've started brilliantly here alfresh ramjani Straight drive. They, they ran the first one hard. They ran the first one hard. Now let's have a look at this. So they did run hard. Slight hesitation. But I'll tell you what, I think it was a direct hit. You can't really fault the batters too much. It was that direct hit. Edge. No. There was a sound. The man at uh, Gali around third is also interested in the sound. Mm, there was this a little sound. Explain that, who's? And in talking about the warm-up drills and how they are preparing a misfield again. That is one area they were working hard on in their warm-up drills. Groundwork. Stopping those singles. And there's a blemish there. The thing about that run out is Muhu Musa used the dirt. Was, uh, he was running to the danger end. So he sprinted, turned and he came straight back. I thought there was a slight hesitation but it was from the other end. He knew he was running to the danger end, so he cannot really fault anybody else. But I think that you've got to put down to just a brilliant bit of feeling, attacking the ball, clean pick up, and 
t the throw was on target. Brilliant. Looking to finish up now. Who are in his opening over? Full, straight, and he's got a size 10 about him. End of the over, seven gone, 38 for three. Family's out. Cooler boxes, it is spring. Residents of uh, Benoni. Perhaps they might have, re might have relatives in one of these teams. Who knows? Botswana, Mozambique. Ugandan supporters. Uh, Brian Masaba spoke about uh, Ugandan community hosting them yesterday, the day before. 38 for 3, that's the scorecard so far. Still telephone numbers, nobody into double figures. I've got a bit of work to do now to try and get uh, 150 or beyond you're gonna have to just pick up the intensity a touch here still scoring at five and a half to the over okay i have to try and really pick it up but the energy among the mozambique feelers has been absolutely superb 10 out of 10. ron smartlani has got the dark glasses out he didn't have them five minutes ago such as the pressure of t20 cricket a man being pushed out into the covers. Yeah, now the game starts. Now the hard work starts between these two and Uganda and everyone who's to follow, running between the wickets. Clear, precise calling. Yeah, I think that, was, that should have been two. That really should have been two. I know there was a run out a few balls ago, but that, the weight of that one, it was about halfway between the pitch. Have a look at this. They're looking for the two. And I think the, if you look at the non-striker, he's at the wicketkeeper there. Not enough urgency. Definitely not. Should have been turning for two Alpesh. The fielder had to come off a long way, 10, 15 meters off the fence. And that was enough time if he took off straight away and turned quickly. Yeah, such is the beauty of this country as a quick single is taken. The diversity of the country. Most recently in Centurion where South Africa was hosting uh, Bangladesh. It felt like we were in Chittagong. And you almost assume if Zimbabwe was playing, there would have been a bit of support. Nigeria would have enjoyed some support here in South Africa. felt like an afternoon in Chittagong. They were out in their droves, in their numbers. You've been there, have you? Not quite yet. No, <laughs> no. no not yet. I'll tell you what, they talk about their beaches in Bangladesh that I should visit. There we go. Another opportunity for two. This time they're going for it. And rightly so. Easy to. You've got to run hard. But the pace of it, because nobody in the circle on the leg side, three men out on the boundary. Now there may be a change for Shah. We'll just have a look. No, he's going back. So that entire space is open. And this time it's much better from both batters coming back for the two. Still in a bit of a dilemma, which I should go first for Hussein. Bangladesh or Sri Lanka both boast beautiful beaches but Sri Lanka still top of my list in terms of visits as uh, let's drill down the ground for a single this time it's hit a little firmer and because it's hit a touch harder there we go you can see all three feelers on the boundary and the wicket's coming up because it's one ball remaining, the left hand is on strike, so he's coming up into um, an extra cover position. And he's got protection on the leg side, three men on the boundary. Bit of a stop start to his bowling action and excellent inside the circle. 
appreciation from the bowler. End of the over, eight gone, 44 for three. The young man wants to be on the park. Give him pads, gloves and a helmet and he'll come out and play. He's got his bat. Yeah, itching to get out. And Beth is an indoor center at the back and uh, probably came for some coaching or practice. Ugandan support, supporters with the flag. Driven, gap, four. Beautiful drive. Held his shape. Beautiful. Easy as you like. He just opened the blade of the bat. Not much of a fuss there, Alpesh. Sweet timer of the ball. He, he looks neat. He looks very neat. Floated up. Requires full extension of the arms. And uh, manipulates the gap for four. Uh, there's a field change, the man moving out onto that deep extra cover boundary, exactly where the ball went, and um, a deep but wicket's coming up into the circle. So, field being changed. You've been in those parts of Bangladesh? No, I haven't. Not yet. Sri Lanka? Yeah, Sri Lanka have been candy, Colombo. Beautiful island indeed. I think Sri Lanka is a place that I'd um, like to visit again. Friendly people, beautiful beaches. Food, tea, beautiful, beautiful food. Oh, here's another, another opportunity. And uh, he had to move to his left hand side, which made it very difficult to fire the ball in. But uh, that's a good run in the end. Yeah, just searching for another quick single. That was criminal. Oh, he slipped as well. I think had he not slipped, maybe there was a chance for a run out there. Leading edge. Down to long on for a single. I'll tell you two African countries have been to play cricket. Okay. One is well three. 50 up in the ninth over. Um, Zimbabwe have been a few times with uh, playing provincial cricket. Bulawayo, Harare, but uh, about the two African countries have been interesting. Mozambique, we went once on a, on a tour to play some cricket there. And Malawi, spent about 10 days in Malawi. That was an eye opener. Nice. Down the ground. And uh, yeah, fascinating. A good look at uh, some of the country, the beauty. I think we've got a lot of beauty uh, as far as landscapes. Lake Malawi was uh, absolutely fascinating. Beautiful, looked like an ocean. Spent some quality time there as well. Down the ground. We'll pick up a single to end the ninth over. 52 for three. Still in the first innings here. Uganda batting first. They've lost three wickets. And so now a period of just restructuring and guiding themselves towards what they would feel is comfortable as a total for Mozambique. Morungi, Waiswa. Paguma, Munir, Miyagi, Senyondo, the men to follow. Yeah, I've got to pick it up from here, I reckon these two. Maybe go another over two, six sixes, 
six sevens and then look to start picking it up maybe start looking for a few boundaries in between deep mid wicket show me down the wicket that's maybe one of them and it is there's a full toss good use of the feet as well and the play placement is perfect yeah what's key here, it's the first ball of the over and his second over dima and so immediately he's under pressure that front foot is a bit braced so he's trying to loop it as far as possible and he's just used his feet beautifully in the air over was that half a chance may have been the ball hung in the air for a bit and it's another boundary so immediately he has a shot picks up two boundaries of the first two balls of the tenth over and this may just give them a little bit of impetus to get going with this uh, innings and pick that run rate up and so the key thing here as well we saw in the Mozambique innings or rather in the earlier match where we are able to pick up two boundaries in the first three balls of the over what then what then yeah just need to keep it ticking this over make it a big one down the ground Sometimes you identify, get two boundaries of the first two overs, and you identify this could this be a big over? It's Dima bowling. He's uh, not 15, 1.3. Sometimes you make this a big one, try and turn it into a 50 or 16 run over. Then taken from the leg side onto the offside in the covers. Lunges forward, teases him as they pick up a single that's not too bad either at least get a runner ball of the remaining balls of the over but the last thing you do need are dot balls now got the two boundaries and make sure you get at least a runner ball of the remaining balls of the over Dima quicker this time around on the back foot is uh, rise out and just laps it down the ground for, for one yeah, Aslam was talking about that 13, 14, 15 over area where you do target those 15, 20 runs. This has been a fantastic start from Uganda. We saw early on in the week 100 being achieved in the last 10 overs. As this one's just pushed to the man in the covers. Dotty in the over, 10 gone, 63 for 3, and the change in commentary. Aslam Kota alongside Daryl Cullinan. Eleven runs in that last over. Projector scores at the current run rate of 6.3. They'll get to 126. Now that there's uh, a good partnership uh, being put together, fashioned by this uh, pair of batsmen in Riyadh, uh, Shah and Alpesh, they have this responsibility of taking the at least their wickets intact till the 15th over and look to push on there. So far, it's been a workmanlike partnership. Yeah, a few quick wickets, 37 for three was when the last wicket fell. Felipe Cosa comes back. Oh no, in fact, this is his first outing now, this, eve this afternoon. He's giving him out. He walked well across. And uh, that's the thing, Batsman cannot review this. He's still standing and asking the question to the umpire. Some chat between the umpire and the batsman has just been dismissed. And uh, not to shave, this was a decision that you would have enjoyed. Tell, was it hitting in line? He clearly stepped far across it. The ball hit him on, on the run or on the move. That's what I thought, uh, Aslam. Question of, did it hit him in line? He could full enough. Let's bear in mind, yes, he's well out of his crease. Don't think it was going to be going over the top of the stumps. 
But a batsman, when he feels he's come down the pitch and then be given out LBW, he's immediately going to feel aggrieved. So it's hit the back heel, inside part of the back foot, and uh, this may be a very good decision. The replay confirming that it's actually hit the back leg. If it was hitting the front, then the questions we're asking may be legitimate. So well done, Mr. Umpire. Umpire Isaac Osieko is not one that jumps to an immediate conclusion. He has a long look and raises that finger in the late Rudy Kutzen style. Slow death. Things going well here for Mozambique. The fans in Uganda, a little bit of trouble here at 63 for four. Mozambique, they're about an, a collective effort. Everybody's on the same page. They love the cricket and hugely energetic and enjoying being out there. It's that sort of bowling. They're in those areas all the time. Well, that's what they're attempting to do. And it's working well for them. They look a well-drilled unit. They move well in the field. And, and you can just see the captain doesn't have to repeat himself too often. They know where they need to be. They look uh, as if they've spent time together and work hard at the game. You're absolutely right. And the other thing I've observed about this team, we've seen some very good throw in, throws in from the deep. These guys seem to have very powerful arms. Not all of them uh, stand at more than, say, five and a half, six foot tall. But I must say they have powerful arms. So they do look well organized. That's neatly tucked away. Well fielded. And then the other point to make is they were rattled in that first match against Uganda, against uh, the... Uh, oh, oh, when, Rat, when, Rash, when, what's his name, Radford got those runs. Ghana. Was it Ghana? And had it not been for him, I think they would have scored their first win there. Rexford. <laughs> Plenty of noise. Like so many batters I've seen in this tournament, they just need to get to the ball more. Not too sure what the reason is for that, but too often too many players not getting that right foot to the ball on this occasion. That is, has that gone through bat and pad or outside the outside edge? If it has, I don't know why he was not bold. Did that knock the stump? Was there an edge? <laughs> it's Oh, he's dropped it, so there was an edge. Terrell, that was the sound we heard. Maybe a better angle, this. Closer to the bat and close to the stumps. But he immediately turns to look and then realizes it's been crossed. So hard luck for the keeper, hard luck for the bowler. And uh, Oiswa survives. So one score of no 23, the rest, whole lot of single figures. And uh, Alpe still not out on 11. So can they at least put another 90 runs together to get to an 150 in the remaining nine overs? Alpes, the left-hander, is key for Uganda here. One of their more experienced players. Okay. Oh. Oh. Just, just. I think Mozambique would do well to just try and stop those singles. Where do they want to be now? 
we know it's a good batting pitch. I'd like to think, and just bearing in mind the Mozambican batting, that they would want to be beyond that 132 at least. Projected scores 120 if they continue with this run rate. It all happens so quickly. Time is of the essence. Umpires are very strict when it comes to that. There's no time for drinks bottles to come on with messages in it. Because there's a field that deep extra cover, I would have that fielder further in to make sure that he, they don't allow those singles. This is a beautifully timed sweep shot by uh, Alpesh. Neatly played, got down to the pitch of it and then played it a little late, just around the corner. And he gets four. Checked the flight and has executed it beautifully to perfection. So lots of chat about pitches and especially when it comes to limited overs cricket because it's generally fashioned for or favor fashioned or prepared in favor of batsmen so on day one after two matches 363 was the total 24 wickets had fallen day two 550 with almost an equal number of wickets falling that's a beautiful looking drive superbly timed and they can turn comfortably for the second and then day three, 469. So it dropped by somewhat, by at least uh, 89 runs. I'll likely see what it does, uh, what it reads at the end of day four. So end of 12, 76 for four. Alpesh Ramjani just uh, executed a beautiful sweep shot. Looking pretty comfortable. To follow Pascal Morongi, Joseph Baguma. I'm sure that in the lower order, they, lower order they do have some lusty hitters. They generally pick teams with lusty hitters in the lower order. Lawrence, of course, will be feeling that they don't want to go beyond the spare. Eight overs remain. 76 coming at 6.3 runs and over. I think what their coach, Lawrence Martlana, will be looking for, besides not going beyond this pair, that would be first prize, is that they don't lose any wickets in the next three overs. At least get to over 16. Four down. And it looks like a guy like Alpesh, he, if he gets going here and decides to pull out all his shots, he could be very good to watch. Inside edge. But it's where teams have won and lost it. Keep going on about that 7 to 16 period. Almost just near to steady. It's just steady. But give yourself that opportunity with wickets in hand. And, and, and he's the man. He is the man. 18 of 16. He's timing it well. He's played one or two good shots. So he's got a good feel for everything. He's definitely one of the better looking left handers we've seen in this tournament. I was about to say, you've been talking about the fact that we've not seen the bat come through the intended line of the stroke. He's certainly demonstrating it very nicely. Alpesh. Finds the gap. They could actually turn for the third, yeah. and they do. Uh, oh, my stroll uh, three. It's not something you see too often. <laughs> well, the fielder was in mid wicket. It didn't skid away as we've seen over the last three days. End of it today. So it allowed him to just get to it and, as you say, strolling the three made the point because of the outfield it's it, you just don't get the chance because it doesn't really slow up so you you're chasing it all the time 
Carol, you played in Australia during the early days and they didn't have ropes on the boundaries. The picket fences used to be the boundaries and some of them used to be as many as 80 meters. Batsman on, uh, often ran fours and on occasion fives as well. Of course, that's all changed in Australia. 13 overs complete, 84 for four for the safety of the players. They've now got the ropes inside of the ground. And of course, what that, that does add from a commercial point of view is an opportunity for a, for a sponsor to uh, sponsor those uh, boundary sponges. 33 dot balls. That's not going to please Lawrence Mahatlani. Although this pair have been uh, rotating, it, rotating the strike quite nicely. It's worth mentioning about Alpesh that he's, he's been around and he's an experienced player in terms of Ugandan cricket. But he made his debut in the previous match. So this is his second. And he's looked good. He's looked the part. Where's he been, you're asking? <laughs> now, well done. Man, if he can be there till the end, it would be absolutely fantastic for him and his team. Given that he's uh, hit a number of boundaries, he's played the sweep shot, the shots over the top of uh, the inner ring of fielders. The bowler, the left arm, or is a right arm leg break bowler. Deep set leg side field. Deep square leg, deep mid wicket, conventional mid wicket. Just three quarters of the way in inside that inner circle, and then a long on. That's a slow, teasing flight. The batsman was already into his stroke. Bulule. We saw a very good performance in the first match today from Drew Maisera, the leg spinner. But he wasn't scared to give it a rip and it looks like Bulele is the same. That's what happens when you look to give it a rip, you get a bit of turn. They call for the second hesitation, doubt. Again, a good throw comes in from the deep there, Daryl. So maybe a wise call in the end. I think it was a wise call. He's got it in hand and he's one of the boundary riders. Then it's definite no, but if he hasn't, you can take the arm on. The ball seemed to swirl away from the fielder as he was looking to, 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 to cover that. But got a good throw in anyway. Once again, that man. Zhao Hao. He must tell us how he does it. How do you do? It's a lovely name, Zhao Hao. Sounds like a greeting. Yeah, it's a bit of like a movie star quality to it. Told his middle name is Jorge. Zhao Jorge Hao. Good single. Projected score at this current run rate of 6.29, 125. So they've upped it a notch. They'll need to up it a whole lot more. This is the moment here where Alpesh, the left hander, the leggy bowling and left-handers would favour this, so it's spinning into their pads, brings in the straight drive, it brings in the slog sweep. The thought will be going through his mind, does he take him on? Goes on the offside. That's just a, a lovely shot, and, and the non-strike is it's not somehow stopped. Maybe they thought it was a, a given boundary, but it wasn't. They probably turned down the option of uh, running a good three. 14 done, 89 for four. Yeah, perhaps just uh, a deliberate chip over the inner field from Alpesh. So no real force behind that stroke. 
But he's picked up two, ends the 14th, 89 for four. Partnership 26 of 23. Well, yesterday we were treated to one of probably the finest innings by Anil Akil from Tanzania, 52 of 27. When I interviewed him after the game and after the official interview on television, I asked him, did you actually feel that you guys were going to get there? And he said, it was, it was no problem. He just knew they were going to get there. Of course, he revealed something very interesting to me yesterday, Daryl, off air again, that uh, he represented India under 16. And uh, the way he paced his innings, knew exactly which was the boundary ball. It was just tough class stuff. I mean, I was out of the commentary box at the time when he was just dominating the affair. And his, his strike rate, I think, went from around 100 to about 135. And with complete confidence and control. Best inning so far of the, of the series. They clearly need a big over. Over or two, just to put the pressure on uh, what has been a rather boisterous Mozambican team. They've not really put the bowling under any pressure. Keith will tell us what's the uh, highest number of uh, runs scored in any over so far in this innings. You speak about little Indian left-hander. Um, he represented India under 16. Keith is just confirming two scores of 11 in uh, overs. They need 15 and 18 right now. Continue, Terrell. And this is now, and, and having a chat to Mashram Baig, who's the Malawian captain, he was saying that they have the option of picking a lot of players of Indian, Pakistan, and Sri Lankan origin. And made a purposeful move to look at the local Malawian players. Catch! No! It would have been if there was a first slip in place, but that's not going to be the case at this stage of the innings. And it's a boundary. Ninety-six for four now. That would have been one of the best catches had it been taken. Just enough edge on it to elude the keeper. Let's get back to their squad. So they backed a lot of young players and looked at a youth development program which is starting to yield results. Blessings, the opening bowler is an example of that. You came from absolute obscurity. And 15 down, 96 for four. And they faced challenges where uh, they couldn't find shoes for him. He's a size 14 in the whole country. But he made an, another important observation which we probably neglect and that is the aspect of nutrition which is such a big factor for a lot of these young cricketers. Always is, isn't it, in Africa? Yes, and you know, if you take like Blessings as an example, um, in, a, in a real professional environment, and, and that's something which would change, and he probably got the opportunity to fill out a bit, and you know, they can add things like uh, extra pace or slide. It was up, it was full, and no! the man at Deep Maran has not given himself a chance. No! He was slow in getting off the ropes. Never looked like he actually wanted to catch it. He was on his heels, Daryl. I was actually watching him when the ball went straight up in the air. And it's that split second. From the moment it leaves the bat, if you tell yourself, I'm going to catch it, you will. In the end, he does make a valiant attempt, but... Uh, a chance gone, a banging, and it's also gone for four. So there's a single. 
So the total 97 for four. We're into the 16th over. Alpe still on a very well played 31. He'll probably have a rethink about that lofted drive because he's he's just hit it. He's not gone through the stroke. This time he does. He opens the face of the bat. He angles it and he will get the boundary. That is a quality stroke. Having realized early on that uh, they could have held out to the straight fielder. It's uh, gone through for four. That brings up the hundred. Let's watch how he's played this. Watch that face of the bat. Yep, he's opened it and he's played it well. Yes, we are. 101 for four, halfway into the 16th over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just making certain that he's got his fielders in the right positions. Three fielders on the leg side, all on the boundary. And he's looking to exploit. And that's the field change that he has made, but the ball has cleared the field, has gone through his arms. That was another beautifully timed stroke, and Alpes now on the charge. She said, she said, I'm not begging down my lane, but she begged her lane. What? Another full body drive. This has gone through the legs of uh, the fielder in that inner ring. They turn for the second. It's a good positive run by Kenneth. And uh, we'll watch one more delivery and then there will be a commentary change. Hussein Manak is uh, in the company of uh, the Botswana coach who uh, earlier scored a wonderful win. Joseph Angara is the man. We'll hear from him in a moment. Catch. International cricketer, I might remind you. Oh, certainly wasn't a run, but they're so eager. They've realized that it's uh, a necessary period to up the run rate. End of 16, 110 for four. Over to Hussain. Forty-seven uh, partnership. So Alpesh on 44, 29 deliveries and Kenneth 12. partnership is worth uh, 47 runs at the moment so I've got with me um, a special guest I had a chat with him this morning they had a very good win by the way this morning wonderful performance from them Botswana coach Joseph Angara how are you doing Joseph fine thank you sir. fine thank you So Joseph, tell me, what did you um, rate your performance like this morning? 10 out of 10? 7 out of 10? Yeah, 7 is good enough. All right. Our pace is looking good. He's closing in on a 50 at the moment. Current run rate is 6.0 now, so beginning to pick it up. And you feel there's going to be an acceleration. There has to be now if they want to get to that... Uh, 140, 150 mark at the moment. If they continue at this run rate, it's going to be close to 140. But I reckon 150 psychologically may just not be a bad mark to get beyond. Kosa is in again. Skipper clipped off his pet. I'm sure if he got a bit of bat onto that one. Yes, a some bat. So he will move to. One more, maybe 46. All right, so Joseph, tell me, how long have you been coaching the Botswana team? I've been there for six years now. And how have you enjoyed it so far? So far, so good. It's nice to see uh, the boys improving. There's too much, a lot of talent it just, th that just needs to be nurtured. This is hooked away. It's uh, not clean off the middle of the bat, but it's effective nonetheless. He'll take it. Well, uh, Kenneth, four more runs. So there's going to be... Um, intent to accelerate the run rate and uh, tell us a little bit about the Botswana team when you got there what we, what was cricket like in the Botswana setup the environment environment the coaching the facilities the talent what did you experience while you were there well in terms of talent there's enough talent apart from the facilities because we only have two grounds in Gabaron 
Oh, it's a yeah, bit of a bubble. Yeah. They're going to push for two here, uh, and they'll uh, get it. Yeah, but I can say Botswana Cricket Association has really done well in terms of trying to improve the facilities for the upcoming boys. And uh, as far as the talent, you have a high-performance team? Do you have a, a, a squad that you work with aggressively, or is there... Okay, this is hit over the midwicket uh, area again. It's gone squarish this time. It's just cleared the man in the infield and four more runs. So this is going to be a big over. It is something that's uh, needed from a Ugandan perspective. Very well played. How does your squad work? How big is it? Um, we have a squad of 25, 24. Uh, we've actually worked so hard to now we have a squad of also under 23 that we build up. Uh, I know our development program has been affected with the corona issue. The school program has not started yet, so the under 13s, under 15 are still not uh, in place yet. That's going to be a wide. In fact, it's going to be two wides. One, 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 one. And uh, when, you, when you got there, tell us about... Um, Asam's just passed me a note, and uh, I know a chicken bamji was very active actively involved there uh, what was your relationship like with him and since he passed on also during the whole covid that must have been a blow yeah may his soul rest in peace uh, he had made a lot of impact in Botswana cricket he's been there for a long time he had passion he had a lot of passion to see the young Botswana boys grow and play at the top level that's the over bowl so 17 overs bowl 125 for four when you work with the squad at the moment, I mean, we saw this morning um, the youngster you brought in. Now, uh, I'm just going to get his name. Dhruv yeah. Mysuria. He bowled quite beautifully. And uh, what has his development been like from a young age? Has he come through a junior program? How yeah. long has he been playing cricket? Yeah, Dhruv has come through the development program since uh, 2014. He's been playing, he's done, uh, played for the under-19s and come through to the level. Uh, for the last uh, three years, he's really done well. He's worked on a lot of variations and, you know, he's done well for Botswana cricket. What is your view on some of these youngsters like a Dhruv and a few others perhaps maybe coming and playing cricket in South Africa? Are many of them, have many of them explored coming to play, maybe even league cricket, franchise cricket? It will be actually a very good opportunity for the Swana boys to be exposed to this kind of the level of cricket here that just raise up, raise their standards. So Bolele is getting good flight here and that one spins a long way. Remember this is day four. No, 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 you can't do that. Okay, sorry. There's only referral for run-outs, line disease, no end of the So, a uh, beautiful flight. Pulele is into his third over, not for 19. It's tossed up again, this is swept firmly, good wrist work. Yeah, it's a fumble. Will they come back for a second? Yes, they will. So, uh, yeah, okay, you, you were saying, so, so you've been working on quite a few variations with him, yeah. things like that? And um, playing in South Africa, that you said that's been an op that is an op uh, an opportunity and something you wouldn't mind seeing. That would be a big opportunity. Yeah. Can't wait to see that happen. Yeah, and maybe we should look at setting something up uh, in some sort of network. Oh. Cut away. It will uh, be definitely one. Yeah, not two. There's a few interesting stories about uh, right. some other young players. Some of your challenges, what have been your, your biggest challenges out in Botswana so far? Uh, the first challenge is like we don't play enough competitive cricket and that's one thing that uh, other teams are ahead of us. Like you look at a team like Uganda, which is in Jersey, played top cl uh, class cricket. So if we can also be exposed to that kind of level, definitely we're going to improve. So what is the, what is the reason that Botswana are not playing uh, that much cricket? Oh, this is hit firmly. Will it carry? It's going to be tight. Oh, that's a good catch. But unfortunately, it's just cleared the boundary rope. Maiden 50 for Alpesh. And uh, it's uh, been a wonderful knock. He's looked the part. He's looked class. 
He's played beautifully, and I've certainly enjoyed watching him bat. Elegant stroke play, certainly, from him. I did feel it times perhaps maybe the running between the wickets could be a bit more urgent but I tell you what he certainly got uh, Ugena into a good position have you watched him bat before Alpesh what, what did you think of his innings yeah he's a good player he's a very good player and also he's a good around that to say all, all of it and uh, when he stays in the crease definitely the score will rotate the score yeah that is a good catch I think it's better to catch the ball you see a lot of feelers now is this something that you work on with your players catching on the boundary on the edge now i mean if you look at t20 cricket around the world especially lpl ipl i mean there's so much work being done in that area now where the guys are catching the ball throwing it back and running back in and all sorts of things definitely i mean fielding is 70 percent of a t20 if you have a good fielding team it sets you up for a win absolutely how's your how's your feeling been so, Overall, are you happy with uh, your feeling unit? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think uh, also playing Uganda in the first game, we just showed us that we need to raise our standards in this kind of tournament. And I think today we showed it and through that kind of performance, definitely you can't ask for more from such kind of a youngster. How has your preparation been um, for this particular tournament? I mean, how, how much time have you spent preparing for the tournament itself? coming into it well it's only for the last two two weeks because we are hosting the ACA I mean the girls uh, under 19 qualifiers that we stopped a bit but before the start of the tournament we had uh, two games in Pretoria again it's Titans uh, squad select squad which was very good so coming into this at least again how did those games go we won one game and lost one. Oh, excellent Excellent. I think that that's a good move. I think tournaments like this, it's it's always a handy to come in a bit early and get used to the conditions. I'll talk a little bit about your career as well in a moment. And Kenyan cricket. Did you? I'm, I'm sure you would have watched that Kenya Tanzania game with a lot of interest. This is hit away square leg. Jao. Oh no! Oh no! He's such a wonderful fielder, but. Uh, Slightly sloppy then he may even have injured himself. Jaho, hope not because he can bat and he batted quite well the other day. So uh, this again wasn't hit firmly by Alpesh, but good enough in order to get the boundary. That's called a wide. That's about the, Ugand uh, the, the the Kenya game. And I mean, you of course played international cricket just for our viewers and listeners out there. You did play for Kenya. Oh. Lovely no, no. drive down the ground. It's just going to be a single. Wait, 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 wait. How long did you play for Kenya? And when you retired, did you get straight back into coaching? The score is 18 overs ball, 140 for four. Well, I played for Kenya for 10 years, playing in two World Cups. The first one was 1999 and the famous one 2003 where Kenya reached the semi-finals. So that was a good career from myself. And after that, I think I just went to, to coaching straight away after 2004 when I retired. And uh, what do you reckon with, with the Kenya side at the moment? What do you think of the team, their performance against Tanzania? We watched that game closely. Yes, I did. Uh, Kenya can't be disappointed, but you can't take anything away from Tanzania. We actually really calculated and planned the inning so well for them to come with that kind of victory. Have you been following the Tanzania team before? I mean, they, they basically barely qualified. In fact, they didn't, and then they got called in to replace Nigeria. Was that expected? Did you expect that type of performance from them? Definitely, yes. We played the Tanzania in the last year qualifiers where we lost by three runs for them to have qualified to the next stage. And they still beat Kenya after that. So it's not the first time Tanzania is beating Kenya. So they've actually improved uh, in all departments of the game. Yeah, they definitely looked a more than useful team. And uh, I'm certainly glad that, that your team, uh, Botswana, won this morning because you look like you like you were going to um, almost co almost cause an upset with a lowish total in that first match this is hit away by our pass it's uh, Jaho who's bowling third over the penultimate over of the innings they're going to get two here 
And in fact, they're pushing for three. That's uh, brilliant running between the wickets. Alpesh must be tired. He was uh, he moves to 61 of 36. It's hot out there at the moment, although the breeze is a bit of a breeze, and I think that's that's keeping the players out there a touch on the fresh side. Have a look at this. Good running. They kept going. And then uh, the slip there, and then the fumble, and then it wasn't a great throw either. So that's allowed them to come back for three. These are valuable runs, by the way, because Mozambique just seemed to have dipped a bit. Do you feel that? The energy was very high early on, and now suddenly the body language seems to have changed a little with this uh, partnership, which is now worth 80 runs. It's amazing what a partnership does, eh? Oh, he's aborted this time. Yes, indeed. I actually enjoyed the two opener bowlers who actually hit the right good areas and they actually bowled to their field. Uh, those two missed chances, catches there, would have made also made a bit of difference. Yes, there were a couple of chances. One was by the keeper, right? The keeper, keeper dropped one and behind the stumps. Also deep gully. Yes, at, at gully as well. So though, had those been taken, it's a different game altogether. Jaho. Oh. Down the ground. They're going to be looking for two. Yeah, that should have been two. And I've seen a number of those as well. Just, yes, Alpesh has batted well, but I feel that turning for the second, I don't know if it's a fitness issue, but I tell you, I counted at least about eight to ten runs that were not taken when there were fumbles in the outfield. Just the urgency with regards to the running. He could easily be on, on about 80 or 90 by now. Had he been uh, maybe a touch on the fitter side. Running hard between the wickets. He's played really well. That's hit firmly, beautifully hit. There is a man back. Oh, and it's another fumble. Oh, Mozambique have not done themselves any favors here in the field. Four more. Alpesh is a good hit of the ball. We've seen him for many times. So I'm sure he once uh, he's been in the crease for six to seven overs, he's tried to depend now on his boundaries. Yeah, you can see this. He's really made a hash of this on the boundary. It's not something a bowler wants to see, and neither does a captain. Ooh, I think this is going to be out. That's unfortunate for Kenneth. He was looking good on 26, but uh, that is quite unfortunate. It's come off the bowler's hand and deflected straight onto the stumps. You ever run anybody out like that in your career? <laughs> That's very unfortunate to get out like that. <laughs> 26 of 22, Kenneth Waiswa. He's uh, on his way back, 148 for five. What do you reckon is a good score? Do you think they've got enough on the board at the moment? Or think maybe another 10, 15 runs? 148 for Uganda. With the, they've got a very good bowling attack, which we saw in the first game. So for me, I think they should be happy with that score. I think that's enough. So the new batter will be going to the non-strikers end. Pascal Murungi is going to be at the non-striker's end because of that uh, freakish run out. It was unfortunate. That's not a nice way to get run out. Got better. That fifth wicket partnership. Okay, so they were heading towards a fifth wicket partnership of which the record was 91, but they got 85. So that previous round, this is firmly hit. It's going to bounce before the man out there on the boundary. It'll just be the single. There's one final over after this still to come. It's done well to get to 150 here here of Uganda. So this is the run out. Have a look at this. Deflect off the hand and straight onto the stumps. Here's the side on view. You can see he's out by a long way. Yeah, that's a, a long, long way. He didn't even make an effort to get back. He had no chance to go back. Oh, that's a good shot. 
<laughs> that yeah. is a good shot. He was deep in the crease. He hit him on the back foot. And Chaho strikes. And another wicket falls on 149. Yeah, that's uh, that looked pretty adjacent because when he hit you on the back foot like that, it looks like uh, probably crashing into middle and leg. Juma Miyagi is on his way back without scoring. 149 for six. Yeah, that looks like it's crashing into leg stump. And uh, yeah, when it hits you on the back foot, generally the umpires uh, don't don't have too much doubt. Tell me, in your playing career, what was uh, what was cr what is cricket like in uh, in Kenya? Tell me a little bit about your career and you know, some of the challenges, some of the experiences you've had. Who, who was one of the be the better players you've played with here? We had many great players. We had Steve Tikolo, we had Maurice Sudunde, we had Kenny Dubuya, Ravindu Shai, Deshmodi, Thomas Sudoyo, Martin Suji. These were all good cricketers at all, all rounds. Did you play in South Africa? Yes, I did. Uh, actually, my first coming, so I came to Plaskon Academy with the likes of Mark Boucher, uh, Jeff Toyana, Ashwal Prince, and actually improved my cricket here. I, when I finished, I also played some cricket in Cape Town for Google Letter. Okay, and, and that always helps. So we had a few Kenyans who came out and played in Indonesia at that time, stage when I was playing. Martin Suji, I remember. That was Steve Tikolo for a few years as well. He came and played in Soweto and then played a lot of club cricket around in these parts. There's still a, a lot of Kenyan cricketers still come out and play their cricket here or not, not anymore? Not anymore. Uh, I think uh, for the last four or five years, none of our Kenya cricketers have been here to play some club cricket. Final over. Okay, this is it up in there. It's hanging in there for a long time. It's going to fall in the gap. And it looks like it may be a no ball. So the square leg umpire is signaling no ball. And what is that for? Now, let's have a look. What is this about? Something about the circle. Were there only three fielders in the circle? In fact, there were only two fielders in the circle. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There were only two fielders out in the circle. So there were basically six or seven out. Okay, feeling restrictions, no ball called, it's a free hit. Oh, Opesh carries on like this with a few, few, few more free hits, he could get to 100. Let's have a look, he's on 68 already or 40 deliveries. It's been a very useful innings, he's looked apart. He's nice and tired, but uh, I tell you what, he's really looked very elegant. He's been a pleasure to watch. Chopped this over midwicket, it's running away in that gap. But it's going to be a ball, couple. Ball, oh, ball, and no. overthrow. But well backed up. Uh, Kenya have always been a powerhouse in international cricket, haven't they? Yeah. They've always been. They've done well for the last two years. At the moment, who would you rate as being probably one of the strongest um, teams among the associate nations they're pushing for two year Alpesh wants to get back on strike so if we can finish this over with a few big hits a few lusty blows and maybe some boundaries maybe get them close to 170. let's see there's still four balls legitimate balls remaining Having a go at that one. Oh no, another fumble here. They've gone certainly flat in the field have um, have Mozambique. Unfortunately, they were so bubbly and full of energy when they started. But this partnership, in fact, that highest score of the tournament now, uh, Alpesh Ranjani. Uh, he moves to 76 of 43 deliveries. And there's still three balls remaining. Who would you rate as being one of the, probably the strongest team at the moment in, in, in 
African cricket, apart from South Africa and Zimbabwe, who are just playing nations. And of course, I think look, the Namibia look quite strong at the moment. Definitely, Namibia is strong. We're happy for them being there. Heaved away. He's going to push for two. He has to try and get back on strike here. Off pass on Johnny. Yes, he does. Definitely, Namibia has done really well, and we're happy for them. We keep on supporting them when they're up there. So it actually gives more other African associate countries in Africa to raise up their standards. Correct. And, and in this tournament here, who would you... I know, obviously, you may say Botswana. <laughs> oh, that's bold. Well bold. Nice and straight. But you can see that uh, Apesh was very, very tired. You can see his body language. He's uh, certainly out of breath. But that was a useful innings. He's got his team to a very, very useful score. A total is a good one. It's defendable and, in fact, it's put them in a very commanding position. That is the highest individual score officially of the tournament. 78 of 45 he goes for. And Uganda 162 for 7. Got a decent attack, haven't they, Uganda? They do. What do you What do you make of some of their bowlers? They seen, do. Seen quite a bit of the attack. Yes, I did. Uh, the first two opening young bowlers, the other day, Miyagi, bowled really well, and they've got decent spinners who, if they uh, just bowl, uh, uh, I mean, just keep it simple, they should be able to take it away from Mozambique. <laughs> Who wouldn't you like to play in the, if you get to the final? Which team would would you not want to face in the final? All you like to, I uh, would want to face Uganda. You rate them quite highly. Yeah, I think they are the favourites. To be honest, I mean, you know, sometimes you got to be positive, but in yeah, reality, yeah. They're so the they're good. the favourites. They're the favourites for me. Not Kenya or Tanzania. Swing and a miss. That's it. 20 overs bowled. And uh, it will end on 162 for seven. Well, uh, Uganda, they're going to have to come out and defend that. They've given themselves a more than useful chance. So I've had an interesting chat with Joseph Angara. Thank you, Joseph, for coming through. Really appreciate your time and um, enlightening with some of your views and opinions. But uh, interesting, that man... Um, Lawrence Matlani, do you think he'll be pleased with the total? What do you reckon? He's done a good job with Uganda and uh, I'm sure he's very pleased with that. He has a good bowling attack to be able to defend that. Yeah, so he'll be pretty pleased. 99 scored of the last 10 overs. The last five, they've scored 66. That's a run rate of 13.20. So the last five overs yielding a lot of runs. Power play was uh, 32. And then in the middle overs, the 7 to 15, they got 64. So uh, that was a well-constructed innings and to set it up at the end, the last um, 10 and the last five, just to be able to accelerate. But uh, it was, it was Alpesh Ranjani who was uh, absolutely splendid today. He certainly made it happen for his team. 78 of 45, 23 for Riazat Shah, he was given out LBW and then Kenneth Weiswa was run out for 26. He also put on a useful partnership together with Alpesh Ranjani. 162 for seven. They've got a bit of work to do. Kenneth, um, I mean, Joseph, thank you very much for coming through. Really appreciate it. And all the best for the tournament. Thank you very you much. And your team. We have a very good one tomorrow. We can't take anything away from Mozambique. They've really shown the ball well. And uh, definitely we have to do our basics right to be able to go through. All the best. Thank you for coming through. Thank you so much. That's a bowling uh, card summary. Two for Lorenko Simango. Two for 20. One for Jaho and one for Philippe Kosa, the skipper. Well, it's going to be a total that uh, they're going to have to try and come out and and uh, chase down Mozambique. They're going to have to bat well and see how they can construct an innings that can uh, chase this total down. It's, it's a biggish total, you have to say. These are the highlights. Let's have a look. That was a chance. At uh, point, backward gully, Jaho, the man who had a brilliant run out in the first match. He missed that opportunity. And uh, there was one more. We'll have a look at that one, perhaps. But 
It allowed them to uh, get away. This was caught at the wide's first slip. And another catch dropped at slip. So a few chances did go down and they may end up ruining those because when you drop catches and we saw that in the game this morning where Ghana dropped three or four chances of Botswana and they paid the price. So Mozambique they held a few but dropped a few as well. And in the end Riyazat Shah looked good for the time he was there. He played some beautiful strokes. And then there was this wonderful run out. Have a look at this. Pick up, throw, brilliant. Superb run out. He, ran, he ran out Muhu Musa. Didn't do too much wrong, but it was just the quality of the pick up and the throw. And this is when they started accelerating. Picked up two boundaries with the first two balls of that over. And this was a big, big over. But that LBW looked to me like it was perhaps maybe a touch outside the line but the man in the best position is the umpire and he's given that out and then that man um, Alpesh Ramjani he began to accelerate play some gorgeous sweep shots there was looked like another chance on the boundary that ball flew away for, for a maximum and then he was joined by Kenneth good use of the feet by Ramjani that was a six but uh, good catch on the boundary was a bit of a teaser but it did clear the boundary in the end so uh, he started ex really expressing himself and played some glorious strokes but uh, Mozambique in the field did not do themselves any favors drop three catches and lots of bubbles and missed fields like we see there and unfortunately they're now going to have to come out and chase this total down that was an unfortunate run out Jaho trying to stop the, this ball deflection of his fingers and onto the stumps he was out by a long way then the LBW right towards the back end of the inning Jaho picking up another wicket he's a useful all-rounder will be disappointed with his, with his efforts in the field today he's a wonderful fielder and that was the end of uh, Arpesh Johnny who batted quite beautifully so the target is 163 which Mozambique are gonna have to come out and chase down
one of their strengths, Uganda, their opening pair. Opted for the spinner to start, but Juma is one of their prize bowlers. He's got two slips now to the new batsman. Gloves him first up, and that's always uncomfortable for any batsman. Mozambique batsmen don't look too confident here. You must got to be believing that there's more than one wicket here. That's what everyone's playing for. The African Cricket Association Cup, T20 Cup. It's brand new. They're waiting for the uh, manufacturer to deliver it, Daryl. So there you go. That's a good delivery. And the batsman made it look even better. Made it look an even better delivery. Also a, a lovely easy action. Well over that front leg, good follow through. Those are all the sorts of things you'd coach a young fast bowler. I'm interested in uh, the way he grips the ball and the way he releases it, uh, Daryl. It can't be all unorthodox if you're hitting a length and you also just uprooted the middle stump. But I'm just interested to see how the wrist perhaps just breaks at the point of delivery. Perhaps we'll get a shot of that at some point. Yes, it was a ever so slight nick, uh, loud enough, good enough for the umpire. And you just felt this is what it required. Something full, something straight. It's as easy as that right now for Juma. Footwork, nothing to speak of. Just wonder if Mozambique have reversed their order. may have, but uh, unfortunately, no score to his name. Five for two. I also get the feeling that they perhaps just intimidated by the fact that they know these close neighbors. They've played friendlies, apparently they've been doing this quite often recently. And no footwork for, with a second batsman in the top order. Maybe there may be an element of fear, I'm not sure. I think there could be. I think there could be, but... To certain basics, you would think at this level the ability to play a decent forward defense would be there. Maybe there's just a, a, a momentary snap of the wrist at the point of delivery. But, uh, man, as I said, we can't fault him because uh, he's picked up two wickets in one over, he's given his team a perfect start after a bit of a lapse of concentration in the first where their catch was dropped. So they're back in the game and in a real strong way. Uh, Uganda, new batsman, Tembo. Tembo late on that stroke. Maiden wicket over. Two done, five for two. In fact, made in double wicket over. So well done to the tall fella. So Juma has picked up two in that over. Burule and uh, Emilio unable to uh, make best of the opportunity of uh, this wonderful pitch. So they are five for two after two. And uh, a lot of responsibility now on uh, the middle and lower order to try and get to that target. To just remind our viewers, it's the highest target set so far in the tournament. No one in the deep, no one back on the square boundary. That's the offside. That highest score of the tournament and right now for Mozambique after the start, yeah, it looks a long way off.
Kuana has a hundred to his name in this format. And that was against the Cameroon. And that was last year. You feel his team's going to need that today. Something special from him. Watch Joseph, the 17-year-old. Change of pace, keeping it straight. Very impressive. Flight of delivery. A bit of a thickish uh, outside half of the bat, but uh, there'll be four runs for Kuana. And he's the fellow that Daryl's talking about. 100 to his name against Cameroon. He's going to need to produce something really special. It's going to require a rethink by Joseph. That's full. That's outside of stump. And Kuhana is just going to give himself a bit of room. Look to hit it over the offside. Flatter and straighter. That's better. That's where he needs to be. But a lovely action from the youngster. At 17 to get the opportunity to play in these tournaments. It's really special and it's good to see him having an impact. Well, he's been dispatched to the offside and they've got two of their boundary riders in the early overs on the leg side. This thick outside edge will run away for four. Uh, a whole lot of gaps outside the off stump. Perhaps Kuana has picked that up and uh, he's got his second boundary in the over to end the third. 17 for two. Bit unlucky, yeah. That's run off the thick outside edge, but it's always challenging for a spinner with a new ball. He'll get an, an opportunity if that's still the case. When the ball's a bit older and he can look to get a bit more spin out of it. So there's the card and it's the middle order that all contributed. 78 for Alpesh Ranjani. Included seven fours and two sixes. His 50 came off just 33 deliveries. It's the highest score of the tournament. It's also the fastest 50 of the tournament. And uh, he was the mainstay. And along with uh, Joseph, they fashioned a partnership of 85. And this man continues to hit the stumps. His consistency is remarkable. Once again, Mr. Joseph Baguma, or is it Juma Miyagi, pardon me, has picked up the wicket. He's got three in literally what? More than a half a dozen balls. And the plans work and keep it full, keep it straight. Full, slightly less than full. If it's hitting the stumps, He's too quick and too good for the Mozambican batsman. Tembo out for a duck, 17 for three. Mozambique searching for somebody just to keep Kuana company. It's not happening. They need to find someone who's got some sort of uh, skill and technique to deal with a man at the moment. He's running in hard and wicked, so just simply too easy to come by. It's got to be made to work a bit harder to get those wickets. Absolutely true. And really, I must say that uh, all three have uh, hold out two batsmen bowled, the one caught behind, and uh, none of them have shown any any technique in order to just deal with the straightest of deliveries that have been pitched up. And just going back to the Zhou Hao has come in now, the impressive youngster. He's come up the order because he had a very effective 28 in the last match which they play, played, and he was betting at number seven on that particular occasion. That's how you meet the ball on the full. And a no ball. So what a way to start. No ball, free hit, get your innings on the way, son. You've got Kuna on the other end. Fashion something of importance here. Free hit confirmed by the umpire. And Juma's not too happy. Just checking with the umpire. How far was I? Over. Fractionally over. Confirmation that Howe actually came in at five and had a very workmanlike innings. He's not made a good use of the uh, free hit. This one certainly rushed him. Juma continues to impress. Let's just put a little into that one, Daryl. Yeah, I was perhaps anticipating it being full, being a free hit. 
But he didn't look comfortable playing that short ball. Uh, his feet, he's backed himself to hit it through the offside, giving himself room, but the ball has ended up just chasing him, got right through him. Well, Lawrence did tell us before the twist, or before the tournament started that he's got two bowlers who rattle it up at around 140. And uh, so it, it may just confirm the point I made earlier that there's, because they know that these are quicks, there's an element of fear in the way they're batting. I mean, how the way he faced that ball and took it on his hip. Dells, he almost confirms that point. Or get him on then at the other end. Get the other quick bowling at the other end. No more spin. That's good. That's well defended. That's what we want to see. There's no future in giving them a lack of pace. Get it up there. Get the other quick on. Where the Mozambican batsmen are jumping around and no footwork. He's got to be saying to the captain, if he's around, give me a bowl. Give the ball to me. I'm missing out here. Oh, wait. Well, you're absolutely right because his uh, 1.4 overs has yielded uh, just a single run with three wickets to his name. And Kuana has got 12, of which those runs must have come off the spinner. So make the change quickly. Play ruthless cricket. Don't give an inch. Don't take any prisoners. Well, we had five wicket haul this morning from Drew, the leg spinner for Botswana. And this is his career best figures already. He's got a chance here to uh, equal or better that five wicket haul this morning. Four done, 19 for three. Spinner continues. He has the breeze in his favour. It's coming over his right shoulder, so he'll get some drift. And if they are going to take him on the leg side, they'll be hitting into the wind. They just think they feel that they want to give him an opportunity to bowl up front with what may lie ahead in the tournament. Good call, actually, because that's confirmation that the pitch pitches are going to help the spinners along. Kuna has been good, but he tends to want to overhit the ball. He's looking to really hit the colour out of the ball. He needs to just be watchful. In the early overs, there are lots of gaps. About. We've made the point so often, Aslam, that playing good cricket shots brings a lot of uh, value here. The way the ball just gets through to the boundary with ease. Deciding to go up and over. There is a man in the deep and uh, he's got a wicket. So continuing with Joseph has meant a wicket for Uganda. Gifted a wicket, you have to say. Kuhana was looking to anything that was full, trying to head it for six. Beautifully flighted. First wicket for the young man and a beautifully judged catch. If you saw the area that he had to cover to get to that, he's pulled off a wonderful catch. Good out cricket. Joha out, caught by Weiswa of Joseph. 
none for nothing 24 4 There's always the risk of it, even on the onside, if you're going to go the aerial route, you're into the wind. There are men back there, and he's moved very well there. Judge did well, ended up on his knees, but that's okay. The books is caught. All too easy for Uganda at the moment. I hope we do see some sort of resistance from Mozambique. He's watched it well there. Bit of a bubble, but it all counts in the end. It's out. Well, earlier in the day, in the first match, we actually saw something similar to that. On the run, making the catch. Make sure you keep it, catching it close to your body so that it, uh, you give yourself a second chance. That was a perfect example. Santana Dima has just come in. And this at the end of the uh, fifth over. Time for a commentary change. 20 for four after five. And... Uh, Francesco Kuana still there. He's seen four of his partners perish. Juma picking up three in his overs. And Joseph, the young man, his first wicket for Uganda. St. Manak and uh, Six Sochalelo will join you. Thank you, Assam. That's a wide down the leg side. In fact, it's going to be four wides, maybe even five wides if they ran one before the ball crossed the rope. Signal four, four wides. And a wide, yeah, so it's five anyway. So, Jumami Yaji, he continues. Three for six. Well, oh. six? What do you reckon? <laughs> what do you reckon? Looks a decent bowler. Lots of promise. Yeah, and they obviously boast the experience and the wisdom of the coach that they have in Lawrence Mahatlane. <coughs> the tactical awareness that he might possess with all the experience that he's had in coaching the Lions. They're under 19s for a very long time. And so even if they are short in terms of experience and ability and skill, it's the tactical awareness that the coach might have. Hello. Mm. He's got some pace, this boy. Nice, easy action. Very fluent, easy, beautiful action. Fantastic. Fantastic. You see it in his in his face, the enjoyment of what he's doing, all his plans coming together. Easy action, quick release. A pumping of the feet, the knees, the arms, the head as he's approaching delivery. Jump and it's forward. Excellent. Careful. And so anything that you would, would have wanted to harness about his skill set coming up against a coach like Lawrence Martlana might help him get to a next level, starting to believe in his abilities and skill set and also influencing those around him. Pulls out of that one. Yeah, he wants him to pull. Doesn't have protection on the leg side, apart from the mid wicket fielder. Two slips. Excellent. Once again, excellent. 
pitches it short, pitches it short. And somewhere along the line, as a batter, you're anticipating a fuller one. And so you have to be in position. Excellent delivery. Targeting the leg stump. Good seam presentation as well. Full toss, but it's a tidy over. The last to complete the power play for Mozambique. A stare from the bowler. He's pleased with these efforts. 25 for 4. A comparison, Uganda 32 for 2. Mozambique 25 for 4. The difference is that late charge for Uganda. That late charge that took them well over 150. Where does Mozambique find such a similar innings from someone, somewhere? Needs to stand up. Why not? Let him bowl them out. Here's Juma. And that tactical awareness and the experience that they all have in the changing room in terms of Uganda. The captain himself might have thought about giving someone else a bowl. But he's opting with these informed bowlers at the moment. Because he's in the middle order of the Mozambican batters. Looking to steer on the leg side. Yeah, room full underneath it, and it's a maximum. That's big. Six runs. Yeah, Joseph's tossed that one up. I think because of the situation they are in, you'll probably feel that uh, they're in a commanding position he's given it a bit of air but that's good use to the feet he's backed away created a bit of room all the feelers in the boundary on the leg side so he's deliberately got on the on the leg side of this ball and uh, just popped it over the offside boundary that is a quality cricket stroke I had them talking earlier about uh, Kawana that he does have a century behind his name in this format which tells you that uh, Certainly, Uganda cannot take it too easy. They shouldn't relax. If he fires a quick fire 80 or 100, this could just be a different game. And we hope that it does uh, become a competitive one. Required run rate 9.78. That's going to be the key part about this partnership. The ability to pick up a boundary, but also run between the wickets. Dima, yet to get off the mark. A little ass leg, item over. Two to play. What can he do with these two deliveries? Oh no, no, no! Dima rocks back right in front of his stumps and the finger goes up. Dima looking to play on the back foot. There's the back foot, there's the back foot. Comes the front foot and comes the finger with that. Yeah, there's no doubt about that particular decision, and uh, rightly so. He's on his way back for naught, 32 for 5. <laughs> Opting to just paddle it around the corner. The turn isn't there. It's a straight delivery, straight onto the stumps. 
because he cannot access the ball. He's closed himself up by putting those legs together, cannot come forward and paddle it around the corner. Corsa, come forward. There's still a task at hand, Felipe Corsa. Still searching for 131 runs, Mozambique. Or a simpler occasion for Uganda searching for five wickets. Okay, Kosa. Hello, welcome to the crease. End of the over, seven gone. And he's off with the boundary. Seems to have pulled something. Whether it's a hemi or something, he's smiling, but uh, he also is limping at the same time. Let's have a look. Difference there in comparison to the wicked ball prior to that is that he rocked back. The front foot clears it in front of him to try and get down and access the ball. Might have hurt himself in the end. Won't hurt much because he's picked up a boundary. Three yards a shot. The first bowling change. Haven't seen this in this tournament thus far. Openers did their job for their captain and their side. Working well in tandem to pick up those five wickets. Somewhere, somehow, you as the first change bowler, very mindful that they could look to attack you after such a good start. And so equally important for Ria's riser to quickly find his range as this one's run down to third man. How is that, mister? Sorry, sir. Talked about the difficulties that some teams might face, where their strength might be with ball in hand. Maybe one or two players who have got ability with bat. Costa does have two fifties in T20 cricket. So did the man who's just departed, who had a hundred in T20 cricket. I oh, beg your pardon, Kaona has 100 in T20 cricket. He has ability, Kosa, about him. Right behind that one. Protecting his off stump. Very watchful. I just need to get some sort of partnership going here. They don't have a lot of time because it required run rate is just Sneaked above 10 now. And beyond 10, it starts climbing very fast. So I need to continue scoring at around about 8, 9, 10s to the ever just to stay within reach. And at the same time, I don't want to lose any more wickets now. And they talk about scoreboard pressure. The scoreboard's there and they keep peeping over at the scoreboard and they'll see that required run rate climb ever so slightly with each dot ball. Maybe they could just get into a bubble themselves, Cohen and Kosa. Agree on, a, on an approach going forward for the next three overs. Forget about the scoreboard pressure. How do we get ourselves to the 12 over mark? Good bowling. End of the over, 37 for five.
Costa's got those two fifties we just spoke about in T20 cricket. One against Tanzania. And then the other one against the Kingdom of Eswatini. That's the comparison after eight overs. Not a lot of runs in it. If you look at that comparison, they've lost two more wickets as well. But uh, it was Arpesh from Johnny. At 78 or 45 balls towards the end. And um, he certainly did change the complexion of the game. Another bowling change. Back foot. Opens the blade. Has to be two. Has to be two. No, it's more than that. It's more than that. It's four. London Bridge. Yeah, well, they need needed something to just get the, the run rate going. Yeah, I tried to slide and slide the ball back. It's, uh, it's made a hash of that, unfortunately. So how quick that outfield is as well. It was just a little push. That's a hack. Might be useful. One. Just the one. Hack and over the umpire. One again with all that energy and power, just a single. I think what might have interrupted this bit of fielding is because he's right-handed so he's trying to dive and also gather at the same time so he's trying to switch those arms in the end it resulted in four runs there's a push on the offside and it, i tell you what it's more than just a push it's more than just a push it's four runs kaona kaona Suddenly, 10 runs of this over and only four balls bowled so far. Could this be the little momentum shift that they need? Yeah, why not? Why not? On the back foot and wow. onto the bank. Six runs. Wow, that is a glorious stroke. Explosive hitting here from Kawana. You can see now why he's got a hundred behind his name in this format. That's a lovely inside out, cleared the front foot and deliberately deliberately went over extra cover. That's not an easy shot to play, I'll tell you that much. Oh, careful Uganda, careful. I say careful because they probably would have resigned to them rolling over after having picked up the first five wickets. Ow, ow. Clearly, still some firepower within this Mozambican batting lineup. Henry under pressure in his opening over. He's had a whole lot of that into the covers again, and it's four more. Whoa, Trini ran over. Beautiful stroke. Has got to the to the pitch of the ball. You, wonderful use of the feet. And uh, cream this through the covers. Ah, some quality batting here from Kawada. And he's giving himself room. Targeting the offside. Match awareness. Game awareness. Francisco Kawana. Well, he's giving... Again, there's something to think about. I'll tell you that much. Here we go, 39, Francesco Kawana, he's still there at the crease. Four noughts. Interesting looking scorecard. 
And look at the comparisons of the nine overs. I'm suddenly going to hit of you, Genda. Oh, well, well. Perhaps they've spoken about it. Let's just see the quicks off. Eventually, they're going to have to turn to the slower bowlers. But in a run chase, you can't resort to that. You've got to play what's in front of you. Find a way. Riazak with the mid on, mid off. There's protection out at deep square leg. Short to Allen, and it's up in the air. Lands in no man's land, and they pick up a single. I wonder if their yeah, coach, Lawrence Mantan, has lost the sunglasses that he opted for. There's the sunsets here in Benoni. Oh, he's lost them. There he is, on his head now. Hand on head. Look, okay, one is 39 of 22. He's racing. Oh, wait. Edged oh. and just in front of the keeper. Ball short. Good stop nonetheless. Now he does enjoy going inside out. You can see him backing away and looking to go through the offside. Maybe an idea to, to bowl a little closer to his pad. Follow him when he does back away. You can see when you follow him, he gets a little stuck. We did see a lot of that the other day. Their first match. Tend to back away and wanted to score through the offside. Tacks himself nicely inside the line. Runs it down to fine leg. Now he tugs. It does look like he does loses his shape in trying to get connection. The other thing to mention is that uh, Philippe Cosa Antonio is the skipper. He's played 18 T20s, so he's got enough experience. And if the two of them can get a partnership going, it's already worth 27. And perhaps maybe the spanner among the works. Here's a fumble. Oh no. They should have been looking for one there. May have to pick up may have to pick up the intensity here with the running. Because if they pick that up, they can certainly cause a few bubbles and maybe some misfields in the outfield. And then the wheels can come off. It can easily happen. We've seen it so many times. Fine leg been brought into the circle. Long on goes out. It's been a tidy over from Riazat. Can he finish it off? Corsa. Ops to just play behind. And it's a dot to end the over. 10 gone, 59 for 5. Fifty nine for five indeed, with one uh, major contribution, forty of twenty four for Francesco Cuana. It's a disappointing scorecard, and I know that uh, it certainly will disappoint uh, the rest of the Mozambique team. It was an opportunity to get on board, having uh, I would say limited Uganda to one sixty two for seven. There was a recovery for them somewhat, but the batsmen have really been all at sea on what is an easy pace pitch. White called. Leg spinner. Henry, left arm spinner. Was punished in the previous over. He went for 21, 20 runs in his first over. He's got a very heavy hand, Daryl Cullen. Corner. Lofted drive that ran for six was was a gem of a stroke. It's out of the blue. We just yeah. probably got one of the best shots of the tournament. Now, from this commentator's end, we've only seen spin. I can only think that oh, yes, the move has yes, been by the coaching right. captain to give their spinners some bowling time. It's brave to do that because in competition you're looking to just stay 100%. Oh, no, 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 no. But then it comes down to, but we know these guys, we know their abilities. Good call. 
Joseph Baguma at 17 picked up a wicket already. Two, in fact. Off spinner, left arm spinner, both 17. And this is going and going and uh, Go on. gone. <laughs> Good shot, Skipper. Well, it is these type of strokes that will put some pressure on the bowler. The run rate is uh, at 10.3, the required run rate. Yeah, very premeditated, but he's middled that beautifully. Don't get uh, sloppy, what? Uganda. You may have the game won. You may feel right now, and you probably have, but still be disciplined. Tell, I'm going to say the sloppiness was from that fielder. The single was taken. He's rifling it into the bowlers end at high speed. But it's nice to see a spirited performance by Mozambique. They haven't exactly rolled over. 11 done, 70 for 5. They fielded like that and they bowled with that attitude this morning. And again, we keep saying it, but this exposure and playing on a big stage against uh, all the other teams of Africa gives you the advantage also to find out where you need to work on your game. So the points table. This is Group A. Uganda should make this a win. And three teams. Well, every team has won a game. So the net run rate is something we need to keep an eye on. Yeah, the second place is the one we're going to see a battle between those three teams, Ghana, Botswana and Mozambique. Uganda is going to score a win here. They'll have two out of two. You happy to put your house on that, Aslam? Yes, I am. <laughs> Kenneth Waiswa. Uganda's other pace option. Calls for two. Man, it did, but on what he did well there, he got off that boundary quick. Get to the ball, attack the ball. Well, competitive scores, 67 for 4 after 11, 71 for 5. So Kuna really playing a, a very clever hand here. He's attacked the spinners and he's been rewarded. And you can see he's well set now, Daryl. He's playing equally comp uh, with equal competence to both spin and uh, seam. And I also think he's finally realized that, listen, I've got somebody on the other side that's willing to stay with me, a willing ally. I hope he doesn't get too carried away in trying to win the match. What I may have to say here may contradict the purpose of why he's there, but he has an opportunity where he can bat for a period and get a 50, should easily get that, a 60, 70. And that's about... Um, example that you set and players warm to that those around you that we saw the players up front were very intimidated by the pace from Uganda and technically we found wanting but some success just may trickle off belief from the others and he can share his experience I think that's a point well made fair point we've seen matches won from this point it just depends what the approach and the processes or thinking processes are of the batsmen in the middle. They must believe they can do it. 
Going to just drop short of the field there, third man. You do know when you're in those fine positions at third man and fine leg, when to actually run in. Because uh, you may just be wasting all your energy and giving away runs if you miss it. So he's chosen to the safety first. One bounce, allow the run to be taken, done. Watch. Good shot for no runs. Did you hear that call? Watch. Watch the fielder. Watch if there's a run. Watch me bet. I think it was for, the, uh, for his uh, running partner. If it passes him, let's run. If he bobbles it, let's run. Never heard that call on a cricket field. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm assuming it's an <laughs> assumption. That's what, it was, that's what he was telling Kosa, his captain. Slower ball from Kenneth. Inside edge. It's a good over. Just three runs coming off it. Four, in fact, with that last delivery. So Kenneth just bringing it back for Uganda after the 12th over. 74 for five. Tomorrow, Kenya versus Cameroon. And then uh, Mozambique versus Botswana. The two teams that have really tried to get their game together. They've not brought their best game to the tournament just yet. So that will be an important clash to watch for the lower ranked team so far in this tournament. Kenya will be looking to, uh, I'm sure they're smarting from that defeat yesterday and uh, against Tanzania. They'll be looking to push a win here. And I think that's gonna make the group even closer with Kenya also picking up a win, a possible win. Aslam, you follow it far better than I do, but could that match between Mozambique and Botswana be an eliminator? Are you still thinking about your house that you might be losing? Or, or <laughs> what is it? You... I do feel threatened now because I'm getting <laughs> in both my ears. <laughs> I think it could very well be. Alpesh played a very good innings of 78 and quite remarkable that this is his only second match for Uganda. Perhaps he's never just been available or hasn't been possible for him to play for the national team, but he looked the part. He played some proper authentic cricket strokes. Go on up. He's the man on strike. Take advantage of this situation. There's a lot of balls left. Set your sights on batting to over 18. Oh, he loves that back away and carving it through the offside. And here again, he's gone further behind square. 48, too shy of a, a 50. This is a clever stroke. This is a good limited over stroke. Knowing that the fielders are in a deliberate little spoon over the top. Intelligent cricket. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait. Just one. He spoke about that shot. And Anyone looking at it may think, oh, that's a bit of a waft outside all stuff. It wasn't. Uh, that, that's a shot that he's learned to play and plays it very well because he hit it late. He had meant to hit it behind square. That's good skills. Wait. Kuana on 49, the partnership's 49, and this is what Mozambique needed. 
anything they needed, a partnership just to extend that and uh, be presented with um, Aslam Kota's house. <laughs> Team's going to divvy it up. <laughs> End of the over, seven of it. 81 for five after 13. And uh, 84 for four for Uganda. Kuna really keeping them in the mesh here. Very good, clever cricket so far. We've seen Uganda posting 162 for seven, as Terrell has mentioned. Out there playing a magnificent innings. Fastest 15. This is also the highest total of uh, the competition. Mozambique. Now actually look uh, not necessarily favoured, but they certainly look like they're going to push it towards the end. It's important for Kuana to stay on there along with his skipper. To contain, to continue to put the pressure on the bowlers. One or two big overs and suddenly you can set... Uh, Kasim Sullivan. Long serving administrator. As no one knows the cricketing landscape in Africa better than him, Uncle Kaz. Absolutely true. And uh, not much of a sportsman, but loves sport. And uh, I know him involved in sport as an administrator for over 40 years. And wherever he's gone, he's made things stick, including Easterns way back in the early 90s after Unity. Well, the keeper's going to help the cause, yeah. And this uh, runaway buys will mean the 50 wicket partnership. We say that again 50 partnership for the fifth wicket. <laughs> oh man, this is sloppy. Come on. Come on, Uganda. It's not one yet. You've got still a bit of work to do, yeah? See, that's the shot that we've seen too often, that where the left foot gets taken out the way. And yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, better yeah. still. Looking to cut. And this could be uh, a little moment here. That'll put a bit of doubt in Uganda's mind. And well played, sir. Well played, Francisco Kuana. He got in and uh, Mozambique were in all sorts of trouble. But he's fought hard and... All credit to him. Very, very good 50. Under the circumstances, this will be one of his... He has 100 for Mozambique, but in terms of value and the circumstances, this may be his very best inning so far. It is his second 50. Not the most orthodox player, but he, he, he's, he's all guts. You can just see, just look at those eyes. You know, he gets the work done. You know, you look in the batsman's eyes there, and this, this man's determined. He's loving the moment. He just strikes me as he's a scrapper. That's the best way to describe him. You're right. When he did come in, he was looking to play a typical opener's innings in T20 cricket, and then he just sort of seemed to settle in. And he's played well against all the bowlers. Oh, that's a beautiful back cut. That should have gone for four. Almost as good as the one that took him to 50. Well, I must say that he reached his 50, 53 of 34, one more than Alpesh did today. Otherwise, he would have been equal with uh, the fastest 50 of uh, the ACA T20 Cup. But he's batted beautifully. I've enjoyed it. He's hit two sixes, seven fours, and all of those boundaries were measured strokes. He knew exactly what he was looking for, what he was aiming for, and he's been rewarded. This time he's going to hole out into the deep and once again the Ugandans do show that they're absolutely brilliant out in uh, their fielding has been wonderful and once again a superbly judged catch. What a fine innings this has been. He's tried to keep his team in the game and his captain actually goes across to congratulate him for the effort. 89 for 6 after 14. What a pity this has been very entertaining. Giving himself probably too much room there never really find in the middle of the bat and it's great it's a good catch for the man from deep middle it's going to ask you aslam how many rooms your house has got it may be safe now francisco kuana thank you it's been a very entertaining 53 89 for six
I've got to say this uh, as he walks off and he makes his way to uh, deserved applause. Before the tournament, didn't know what to expect. But I must say that I, my spirits have been uplifted over the last four days. Good bowling, good cricket, some fantastic fielding. Uh, you get those lapses in between, that's the game of cricket. But in, in, in the main, I think it's been fantastic. And this innings just highlights how uh, how good the tournament has been. This exposure has been fantastic. There again, Yaji just completing a fabulous catch. It's a pressure catch. Batsman really after your bowlers. And you needed to make sure that you supported your bowler, and you did. Karava, the new batsman, Kasa the man in, he'd do well just to feed him the strike. No, 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 no. Oh, have we seen another batsman in rubbers? I hope he's got spikes because that little slip could have been very, very costly. But I've got to echo your sentiments and add to them, Aslam. So enjoyed the, the determination, the spirit in which these matches have been played. And you can see these players have really enjoyed the opportunity, they've taken it. Yes, at times not the best cricket, but then we've been surprised by some brilliant cricket. It's just so great to see the, the, the gratefulness and, and, and the energy and the attitude and the willingness to want to play cricket. I didn't expect to see that sort of intensity coming here. And it, yes, I'm a huge believer in the future in African cricket, and, and, and I'm glad I've got the opportunity to witness it firsthand. Well, his top scores four. So there's one thing that they will need to do in Mozambique cricket is to find good lower order batsmen. He's missed all four of those five of the deliveries since he's come in. And he's made Alpesh just produce a maiden. End of the 15th, 89 for six, time for six himself and Hussein Manak. Now then. Is there something still left? Do they have something in the tank left, Mozambique? Alpesh. Full, straight, not past the bowler. Gotta say, I was a touch disappointed to see Kawana being uh, dismissed because he really was lighting the game up, wasn't he? Played some glorious. Shots uh, over extra cover through the offside and uh, some sweetly timed strokes. And he got to that 50 and next to no time. But uh, really, there was something there. Entertaining little innings. No, 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 no ball no, 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 called, no, 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 free hit. No, no. <laughs> Kosa, can he take it further? How far can he go? 73 of 29 deliveries remaining. Let's have a look at the front foot. Yeah, it's a close call, but uh, something's got to be behind the line, and don't think there is. On the line is still a no ball. Mm, that's a close call. Very close call, very close call. Room. Connection not there. Goes hard for the first one, but slips again. Slips again. 
Oh, it's not a good idea to use uh, rubbers. It's not a good idea to use full rubbers when it's when it's damp, when it's green, and it's not a good idea to use rubbers even when it's dry because then um, if you're a little bit dusty, you could easily slip. So we're gonna miss. Yeah, the, the, there's a bit of a lull now in their approach, Mozambique. A few swings. Ball's going past the outside edge. Almost a sigh for Uganda after that uh, enterprising innings from Kawuna. There it is. So there's a slip. Oh, he slipped a few times, is not he? There we go. He's just got normal trainers. You do need spikes, I'm afraid. So without the spikes, it becomes very difficult. It's one of those things we tend to also take for granted in South Africa, don't we? Yeah, he's heaved this wide off mid on, or long on. He comes around and um, it will just be the single. And that's the other thing about uh, developing nations, countries where South Africa would just pop into a store, buy it, or get it at a discount, somebody sponsors it, or mommy or daddy or somebody just buys it. And we do take a lot of things for granted, don't we? And uh, many kids out there, many cricketers, I don't have those uh, simple basics that we take for granted available. Good fielding. Good fielding. Body on the line. And at the over, 16 gone, 93 for 6. Because of missed field here, ball goes to the boundary for 4. And so in two minds, whether to come forward and take the catch, but in the end, protects the ball. Mm, that's a good stop. Got his body behind it, and it was a good effort too. It was firmly hit as well, by the way. 93 for 6, 16 overs bowled. It's a scorecard, 53 for Fran Francisco Kowana. It was entertaining of just 37 deliveries. And then 20, Philippe Cosa, he's still there, the crease, a skipper. Philippe Cosa Antonio, 20 of 25 balls. Hello. Might not be over yet. That's a maximum of some sort. Six runs. No, this one's just been deposited next to the change room. Out of the blue, absolutely out of nowhere. And Alpesh tosses this one up. Good slog sweep. Good hands. Quiet run rate is uh, a little too high at the moment, I'm afraid. It's over 16. But, well, i got to give it a go here. Give it a go, mate. Oh, watch for this time. And I go back to the point that you make about spikes and the access and the ability to walk into a store and pick up kit easily as possible what's nice about club cricket as a youngster are the hand-me-downs from gloves helmet thigh pad and at times even spikes playing spikes back foot cut back foot cut and up comes the 100 for Mozambique. Costa's played a glorious stroke. He's backed away, created room for himself, and he's cut this through the offside behind point. Beautiful shot. That really is impressive. Wait! 
looking for room again back to the bowler huffing and puffing Corsa Looks for him again, into the gap. Bit of work for long off, and uh, does beautifully, no. I think that may be a boundary. Yeah. Good sportsmanship because it is the fielder who signaled four runs. End of the over, 17 gone, 107 for six. Yeah, I think that ball just hit his elbow and ricocheted back towards the rope. Unfortunately, it's a good effort. There we go. That was the little deflection. Tried to get up. And so important that okay, in that situation to get up, get back into the boundary before you make contact or pick the ball up. I think that's what he was trying to do, but his elbow just knocked the ball back. So 56 required of 18 deliveries. Forget about the occasion, Carava, and the equation. It's player cricket and player shots. As uh, three overs remain in this run chase. Still searching for 56 runs. Kenneth. Bowl him! Full toss onto the stumps and it's a wicket. I think it may have been a slower delivery this. Uh, maybe a back of the hand or something like that. But it was a change of pace, I think. Let's have a look. Yes, back of the hand, slower delivery. Doubled. And you're able to pick that up based on the batter that he came forward, couldn't get to the ball, took an eternity. His best is still four. Federico Carava. His best is still four. 107 for seven, Mozambique. It's that back of the hand delivery. It's those mystery deliveries at the back end of an innings. It's almost like a leggy his bowl there, like a slow leggy. I saw the back of the hand deliveries. Who was the bowler that bowled those beautiful back of the hand deliveries? Do you remember, Keith? Oh, some uh, beautiful deliveries. But uh, this one wasn't quite that complete back of the hand. It was more of a leggy, almost like a leg cutter, slow leg cutter. Well bowl nonetheless, certainly deceived the better. Kenneth. Bowl him! Here's the third opportunity for a hat trick in this tournament. Kenneth picks up his second, 107 now for eight. This time it's the off cutter. So he's bowled the leg. Cutter, he's bowled the off cutter. Some variation here. Yeah. Both of them have picked up wickets, both on target. Let's put him into a hat trick position. Augustino Navicha did trouble the scorers. 107 for 8. Yeah, it's about the skill set at the back end. No pace behind the ball. It's the fingers, the seam, the pace. Lack thereof, that is. And because he's looking for room, leaves his stumps vacant and gives Kenneth an opportunity to pick up his second. And something else for Uganda, which I'm sure Lawrence Montana would put a lot of emphasis in as uh, Simango makes his way to the wicket, bowl them and bowl them out if you can. Bowl them out if you can. Well, if he gets a wicket with this ball, Kenneth, it will be the first hat trick ever for Uganda. Make history, uh, young man. Kenneth, long on, no, mid off and mid on. Protection in the covers. Simango. 
Nah. Hmm. So now if he gets a wicket of this ball, is he still a hat-trick kid? If he gets a hat-trick of this ball. You've just flummoxed our statistician. <laughs> For a second. <laughs> three legal deliveries. This three, three wickets of three legal deliveries qualifies. <laughs> ah, that was a trick question. Cry from the stumps, behind the stumps rather. And then the bowler joins. Like buys. And as a bowler at the back end, you're bowling to a tail. This is when you want to try those variations, the confidence of trying those variations. Oh, that wasn't too far from leg stump. There's a slide as well. Doesn't have grip underneath those shoes. in the air long <laughs> off confusion watch watch just a single got that 35 of 32 another off cutter was really thrown the kitchen sink at that and uh, all he succeeded in doing was getting the bottom part of the bat uh, to make contact and went straight up. Past the outside edge. Just two deliveries that they are looking for now, Uganda. Which will yield two wickets to wrap this up. Usually frustrating from a captain's point of view and even a coach's point of view. I haven't quite Got going Mozambique after the departure of Kona. You understand? Kenneth. Did he get his fourth? Bowl him! Oh, he drags it on. He drags it on to his stumps, and that's Mozambique's ninth wicket to fall. Four for Kenneth. He's done with his four. Four for 14. Mozambique 110 for nine. And three wickets in the over. <laughs> Wonderful bowling. Wonderful bowling. It's a thick inside edge. Ricochet onto the stumps. Doesn't matter. It's still going to say bold in the scorebook. That was for naught. 110 for nine. Rolls his fingers, scrambled seam because he's opting for a fuller delivery and it's just dragged onto his stumps. He does step across the line but doesn't step towards the ball. Beaten by pace as well. And it's always the wrist action there that tells you that he's not in control of what he's doing. He was setting off for a run. I'm not sure where he was setting off to, but there's a new man at the wicket. <laughs> Kenneth registering his best figures in T20 cricket. A previous of two for 41 against Namibia. Juma, can he get his fourth? As Simango joins Kosa at the wicket. Another day, another enterprising day, full of cricket. Must be your standout today. Chuma Miyagi. Three wickets for this. Six runs in three overs. Well, let's see. Can he get make it four? Quality. That's quality bowling. You just see the slight smile in his face. It's the confidence. 
and the skill set that he knows he has, and so he's backing it now with these full deliveries. Juma. Wait. Swings and swings hard. Shy at the stumps. Looking to give himself room. There's been plenty of action today. Uganda posting 150 plus. Looks like his bat's broken or something. Yeah. There's a piece of his bat that, uh, that's flown off. And he continues with the bat. Going back to your point early on, you almost wonder how many does he have in his kit. Lovely stop. Lovely stop behind the stumps. Late afternoon. Well in front, but the effort's still there. Because normally there would have been one or two bats with a reserve rushing onto the field. But he's continuing with this bat. Maybe it's his favorite. Juma. Pass the outside edge through to the keeper. Certainly plenty of universities might be keeping an eye on this tournament, looking for talent to come and join and perhaps get a studying opportunity. I think he's, 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 he must be in a couple of clubs' interests. Juma. Good stop again behind the stumps. Yeah, I agree. Universities, franchises. What about um, his T20 franchises, IPLs, and so forth? Why wouldn't they be interested in a good young quick bowler and maybe a spinner like we saw this morning, Drew? Some talent here. Oh, oh. Pakistan Super League SA20, which is hosting its auction tomorrow. SA20. That auction takes underway in Cape Town tomorrow afternoon. And what I will tell you is that there's no better in the world that enjoys facing a genuine quick. We can crank it up. End of the over, 19 gone, 112 for 9. Yeah, exciting times for South African cricket as that auction takes on away tomorrow. Plenty of uh, international players showing interest in the South African domestic T20. All that action will be available on Supersport tomorrow afternoon. Four overs, three for seven, Jumami Aji. Good rhythm, easy action and a good genuine pace there. Scorecard 53 for Francisco Kuwana, the top of the order. And then of course, uh, Philippe Corsa is still not out for 35 of 35 deliveries, 112 for nine. Final over remaining. Juma Miyagi is just 19 years old, youngster. Still, scary thing is he's still getting better. This is hammered down to midwicket, and it will be four more. Kosa, get that average up, get that strike rate up. Surprise at opting for a shorter delivery. It's in front of square.
There are some batting glimpses in this Mozambique side. You almost feel the challenge is finding that balance, finding the all-rounders, finding the middle order batters. Oh, hello, hello. That is gone all the way for six. Corsa. Ruining people's numbers here. Reyazat. Decent in his first two overs. This is certainly not short. Swivels around. An effort in the boundary, but six. is just mandatory checking here. Six runs. Corsa. <laughs> Clever bowling. Clever bowling. Riazat. Full straight but dug out by Corsa. Three now remaining. At some point, there were five down. Not looking like they'd get to 100. They've put up a fight at least. And that's the confidence that the coach will want from his, his side. Riazat, Simango, yet to get off the mark, around the wicket. No, 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 no. Rolling full, fast and straight, Riazat. Looks a powerful bowler, broad shoulders. Broad shoulders about him, but still communicating these batters. Over to you. Wow. 126 for four in their first match, Mozambique against Ghana. They managed 126 for four in their first match. So, uh, there and thereabouts, no big improvement, but uh, it's, it's a good Ugandan team that they're playing against. Make no mistake about that. 124 for nine. In the 20 overs, Kosa finishes on 46 of 38 deliveries. And um, Miles in that camp, two wins in two games, starting to announce themselves in this tournament. Kenya with the upset yesterday, so plenty to play for for the other nations. This is the batting lineup, 124 for nine. The Lone Ranger, 53 from Kawa now, 37 minutes, 46 of 38, not out from Kosa. It will take a great deal of confidence, and particularly that middle order with that uh, late. Late resurgence, but in the end, falling short. And look at the bowlers. What an effort. 
What an effort. Joseph Paguma up front alongside Juma Miyagi up front. Look at those numbers. Look at those dot balls. Shah, Waiswa, Ramjani. A wholesome bowling performance. And if you just joined us, these are the highlights from the run chase. It was always going to be about the power play and how they go about it. He lost an early wicket. There was chances for Uganda. Something they want to iron out is their fielding, but from there on, it was potency in terms of fast, straight, at the stumps, clean behind the stumps, putting Mozambique under pressure. Looking for those big shots because somehow they needed to get going. But men out in the deep holding on. Encouraging their bowlers to continue to pitch it up because they've got safety out in the deep. A few times they got it over the ropes. And a couple of times we saw below par cricket in terms of batting. They needed to continue somehow to give themselves a chance few boundaries, few edges here and there. Misfield as well. Not quite sure about his bearings, but Corsa at the end. With the late resurgence, some hope for his side. With a couple of sixes here and there. Feet movement. And we've talked about his ability and how he could perhaps take charge of this middle order in Mozambique. As he can strike the cricket ball. Continued and continued and perhaps they had resigned to not look at the scoreboard but to play what's in front of them Get some form get some game time batting time, but Continued in the outfield again to be potent as well clinging on to everything And that was the man Who scored his 50? Costa needed to continue somehow with the tail and so he did somehow But it wasn't enough He needed a bit of help from the other side but continue did wickets to fall for Mozambique as they were opting to still stay full and straight, Uganda. Dragging onto his stumps. And it is always about how do they wrap it up? How quickly can they wrap it up? Can Mozambique go to the final over? But it is a last minute effort. Last minute effort, but in the end, Uganda too good this afternoon. Let's go down now and have a, a word with Aslam Kota. Thank you, Six. Brian Mabaso, congratulations on a good win. A bit of a wobble up front with your top order, but then your middle order got your team back into the game in fine style. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, not the ideal start for us uh, batting. Uh, we lost a, a couple of more wickets than we would have wanted, but... You know, it, it was good for the middle order to get a workout as well, and I thought uh, Alpesh and Kenny took the responsibility and got us to a safe score. Good point, because Alpesh's 78 is the highest individual score of the tournament so far. He was key to that total. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, he walked in you know, in a bit of trouble, but uh, he went about his business the right way. I thought he played himself in and then, you know, got, got a go at the bowlers at the back end. So it was really good to see him do that for us. I'm curious, and I have to ask you this question. Was it uh, a deliberate plan to use those young spinners up front? Uh, yeah, well, we've got a couple of young guys coming, coming into the team, so the idea has been to expose them as much as possible. And, uh, you know, it was good to see them come out and, and show what they can do. So, you know, it, it was deliberate to give them that exposure. Thank you very much. You're confirming our views in the commentary box. Thank you very much. Congratulations on a good win. Thank you. Thank you. Happy faces all around as the sun sets in Benoni has set for Mozambique because Uganda has won this comfortably by 38 runs in their 20 overs. It was 162 for 7. Alpesh 78, Kenneth 26, Riazat 23. And from the bowling side from Mozambique, it was Simango 2 for 20. Koana 1 for 23, who were 1 for 23 in his three overs. Kosa.